Sports presents the College Football Scoreboard, featuring today's scores and highlights with Jim Lampley and Bino Cook. Jim Lampley again in New York. Stick with us between games. We have much to offer now as we prepare for Florida and Florida State. In Worcester, Mass., Holy Cross has fallen to Boston College 45-10. to 10. In the falling leaves of New England, a four-year moment in time has now passed as Doug Flutie's college career ended with his last regular season game today. Still the Cotton Bowl left to go, but Doug is standing by live with Jack Whitaker on the field. Let's go to them right now. Jack, take it away. All right, Lamps, they love Doug Flutie here in Worcester. Congratulations, Doug. Thank you very much. It was a, it was a good ball game for us, especially in the second half. And, uh, you know, we're happy with the win and the way we won it. We went out with a big win, and that's what we wanted. Make some adjustments. That third period seemed to just explode. I think the first half, they were playing on a lot of emotion, and they were playing us tough. As the second half came around, we finally relaxed. We weren't getting upset. We finally relaxed, sat down, and played our, our style of football. Got your brother in the act, too, didn't you? That was great. I've been waiting for that all year long, and it had to happen today, and it did. Got the touchdown to Darren, then he made an outstanding run for the touchdown. I'm just as proud as I could be of him. Well, you have another thing to do. You've got to catch an airplane, go to New York, and get the Heisman Trophy. Who's going with you? My family, my media family, my brother, and Gerard Phelan. Um, you know, some people from the athletic department, and we're leaving supposedly right after the ball game. Well, congratulations, and thank you for three and a half years of tremendous college football. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now back to Jim Lampley in New York. Thank you, Jack Whitaker, for your elegance as always. Once again, Boston College 45, Holy Cross 10. We'll be back with details and more scores immediately after this. The College Football Scoreboard is being sponsored by RCA, creators of video technology that excites the senses. By Chevrolet. See today, Chevy. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. By Radio Shack, your Christmas electronic store. And by AT&T Consumer Sales and Service. We remind you, coming up very shortly, the kickoff of the game between the third-ranked Florida Gators and their in-state rivals, Florida State. The game from Tallahassee, Keith Jackson and Frank Boyle standing by and will be going there very shortly. Today in Philadelphia, Army, with the nation's leading ground attack, controlled the football on the ground all day and defeated Navy 28-11. to Army's Nate Sassaman, 1,002 yards rushing on the year. He's the first quarterback to rush for 1,000 yards since 1971. Army only completed 42 passes all year. Georgia Tech, Georgia. The game in Athens, Georgia. At halftime, it is 21-6 Georgia Tech as the engineers have thoroughly controlled the game. Tennessee Vanderbilt, the score of that ball game being played in Nashville. Final now, 29-13. Tennessee, the winner, Johnny Jones, again wound up as the Southeastern Conference's leading rusher. Phone poll, is Brigham Young deserving of being ranked number one? Still the nose leading the yeses, 79,085. 64,878. The two new numbers have been installed in Utah, so for all the rest of you, call the numbers at the top of the screen. Utah only call the numbers at the bottom of the screen. Be patient. About 80% of all calls are likely to get busy signals, so if you're trying to get through, stick with it. Try again. We'll be with you until 7 o'clock Eastern Time to continue to report the results of the telephone poll on the question of whether Brigham Young deserves to be ranked number one. The roar is starting to build here in Tallahassee at Duke Campbell Stadium on the campus of Florida State University with the Seminoles hosting old rival the Florida Gators. That game coming up next here on ABC. ABC Sports presents from the panhandle of Florida, CFA football. Today, the Florida Gators and the Florida State Seminole will settle the issue of the state. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy, by Radio Shack, your Christmas electronic store, by AC Delco, General Motors Corporation quality replacement parts for just about anything that moves, AC Delco, the smart parts, and by Zenith, VHS video recorders, the smart decks, the video recorders that have everything. The 
The crowd is reacting to the presence of the Florida Gators coming into the stadium. Eight one and one, ranked third in the nation. They won their first SEC championship ever this year, but have been barred from the Sugar Bowl by the conference. The coach is Galen Ball. He took over from Charlie Bell after the third game of the season, and Hall has won seven in a row. The Gators, a big, strong football team, and now here come the Seminoles, playing at home with a record of 7-2-1, and one, ranked 12th in the nation, headed for the Citrus Bowl against Georgia. Coach Bobby Bowden, ninth season here. His record at Florida State, 80-31-2. And the tempo begins to rise as Chief Osceola, riding Renegade, is out in the center of the field. And when he decides to come and plant the flaming spear, we'll go down and see it. Frank Broyles with us, as usual, on our telecast of CFA football. And Frank, uh, because of the court-ordered dissolution of the NCAA television plan, we started back in September when I suggested maybe this was the year the goose ate the golden egg. And that apparently is reasonably accurate, except the old goose has come down with a bellyache. And uh, you've had a glut of college football on television this year, which may portend some problems for the near future. Well, Keith, as a college administrator, our problem is overexposure is likely to hurt the gate attendance. So we at the college level are looking for ways to have good television but protect the ticket sales. The Florida Gators, on the other hand, while well, we have talked now about the new problem, the Gators in their situation represent an old problem in college football. That has to do with recruiting violations. They have been banned from the Sugar Bowl. Their case is on appeal now with the NCAA. But I would think in this ball game, because they can't go anywhere else, they might just be mad at Hornets. Keith, I think the first reaction was a bit of disappointment, but then after time sets in, it is anger. And if you want a football team to be ready, have them mad. And that's what we'll see out of the Gators today. They are, however, as you say, a complete team. Very complete on both sides of the football, but the strength of this team is the biggest offensive line and the most active offensive line, and in behind them, three outstanding running backs that are big and strong. And Florida State's got some real problems because they've got to keep the football away from this unit and do it by ball control. I think if Florida State's going to win, Roosevelt Snipes, their tailback's going to have to rush for over 100 yards, maybe 175 for their offense, meaning that, and also we must point out that Florida has not allowed a single back to rush for 100 yards. So it's going to be a tough chore for Florida State to stay in this football game. There is no way the Florida State defensive people can let Florida have the football for 35 minutes. No, they, the Florida line outweighs the Florida State defense by about 50 pounds per man. And the Florida State is worried about the wear and tear in the fourth quarter, making it easy to make yardage. It'll be an interesting ball game, but then Bobby Bowden is a man that's got a lot of funny plays in his playbook. There's Chief Osceola. He's getting ready, and so are we. Now here is one of the more dramatic rituals in college football. Chief Osceola. He's off the horse, and when a Seminole dismounts, he means business. Tremendous sight as all of the garnet and gold balloons go fluttering up into a gray overcast sky. We're ready to play football here in Tallahassee at the Dope Campbell Stadium, and we've got a storm hanging just out over the horizon there that may wet us down before much more time goes by. We had some rain earlier today. The sun came out bright and warm. Now we've got another storm passing by. Let's hope it misses the stadium. Because this is a football game that seems to have a little bit of everything. Barry Barco kicks it off for Florida State. Kicks it very short, and the up man picks it up. Rodney Jones, a tight end. And Jones comes back up to about the 30-yard line. He caught it with his knee down, Keith. They're going to bring the ball back. We've seen that before this year, but it's the first time it's been called. There's the starting unit with Neil Anderson, one of the running backs, and we'll talk about them a lot today. They're all good. John L. Williams will open at fullback. Gary Roll is a wide receiver, 5'11", 170. And Ricky Natillo is a sophomore wide receiver and one of their big play people. When he caught the ball, the knee was down, and the first time this year that it's been caught. <laughs> We've seen it not we caught. <laughs> so it's the 20 instead of the 30. And the 
Gators with that enormous offensive line gives the ball to Neil Anderson the 215 pound junior is whacked down at the 22 yard line Walter Odom the tight end 6'3 235 Crawford Kerr 6'4 285 Jeff Zimmerman 6'5 300 at guard Bill Bromley's a midget 6'2 250 he must feel lost in that forest <laughs> 6'1 280 for Bill Henson Lomas Brown is 6'5 and 275, and everybody's All-American this year. It's second down and eight for the Gators. The up man, the fullback, and penetration causes John Williams to run into one of his own people, loses his footing, and goes down on the Bermuda grass. It's William Stroud Nichols. They're the uh, down people for the Seminoles with Williams, Taylor, Jones, and Roberson. The linebackers with a secondary consisting of Riley, Williams, Allen, and McCrary. Loss of a yard on that previous play. So now it is third down and nine for Florida. Florida in white. And back goes Kerwin Bell, the freshman quarterback. Wings one to the sidelines and overthrows the target. The pass intended for Gary Roll. And the Gators will have to punt, and they will bring out one of the better kickers of this generation, a young man named Chriswell. Interesting that they use a team of kickers. One, Chriswell kicks from the long distance. Nardoni kicks the short punt. Both have been very effective. Chriswell averaging better than 45 yards per punt. Cedric Jones is the deep man for Florida State. And Seminole should come out of here with pretty good field position. But Chriswell, if he hits it, and he really didn't get all of it. So they are going to get good field position. He's got some room to run it. And comes back to near midfield. It was a 39-yard punt. And where Chriswell's concerned, that's an upset. Kirk Coker starts at quarterback. A junior. Cletus Jones, the fullback. They need yardage out of Jones today. Roosevelt Snipes replacing Greg Allen as the starting tailback. Allen with a knee injury. Hassan Jones, a split end, 6'1", 200. And Jesse Hester is the blade at six feet 170 and the big play man has burning speed and so Florida State starts at their own 49 in this first quarter here they fake the reverse keeping the ball Snipes and Rosie Snipes gets around the corner and picks up seven yards up front for the Seminole Pete Fenton is the tight end 6'2 225 John Ayanata at tackle, 6'3", 270. Jamie Dukes at guard with a sore ankle, 6'1", 270. Parrish Barwick, the center, 6'2", 270, only a sophomore. Dan Morris at guard, 6'1", 245. And Jimbo Thompson, 6'7", and 230. Second down and three. And uh, Coker keeps it. Tries to deliver the pass. The ball is loose. They're going to call him down. They're going to call him down at the 45. It looked like it could have been a loose football. Well, the rule says that the quarterback, his arm is raised, and any motion started forward, it's an incomplete pass. So I don't know how they got the ruling that he was down. Let's see it again. A little bootleg maneuver. The receivers were open, but Coca did not throw it. In behind, 62, Mitch knocked the ball loose, and I think that's a fumble. Looks like a fumble to me. Third down and four now, and here come quarter-sized raindrops. The ball is loose in the air. Florida's got it. Ball popping up into the air and dropping back on the Florida State 48, and the Gators jump all over it. Mark Cork, the senior from Granada Hills, California. Coca's running the option play. Snipes the tailback is going to turn inside too quick, and the pitch is a little bit hard. Coca pitches it out and goes a little bit behind Snipes. He did not make the, the catch, and the Gators have the best chance to get it and recover. And again, there are huge raindrops starting to fall, so it's going to get very wet here in just a moment. Already, as the Florida Gators come up now, the ball is marked just inside the 48 of Florida State as the Seminoles mistake themselves into a problem here. They held the Gators in the first series. Lorenzo Hampton is in there at the eye back now for the Gators. Goes over the 45, and there is a penalty flag. The referee is Paul Schmidt. 
It's offside Florida State. Pete Williams, the umpire, Joe Pipkin, senior, the linesman, Roddy Baines, the line judge, Bill Lang, the field judge, Ted Thomas, the back judge. They're both sides. And Florida State, play first down. Offside. They're all from the Southern Independent Collegiate Officials Association. Florida State must have lined up offside, uh, Keith. I saw no movement before the snap. Here's Kerwin Bell, the walk-on quarterback, just the freshman. What a sensational year he's had. They pitch it outside to number 22, John Williams, and he slashes for the first down as he goes inside the 35 and out of bounds at the 34. John L. Williams may be the best all-purpose fullback that we've seen all year. Weighs 222 pounds, has caught 19 passes, has rushed for over a five-yard average. Good blocker. When he doesn't have the ball, keep he's blocking a linebacker or an in or pass protected. He's the busiest man on the Florida team in each ball game. Here is numbers for the season. Just inside the 34 of Florida State. First down for the Gators. Irwin Bell, a little pop down the middle. The pass is complete to Frankie Neal, and Neal is on his way. Touchdown, Florida. Kind of an interesting story today. Both teams have quarterbacks all over the place. They have uh, four or five of them, but both the starters in today's ball game were walk-ons. Derwin Bell, who came out of nowhere to win the job. He quarterbacks is more mental than physical. You can see the physical part of his skills, but the mental part of it makes the quarterback. Bobby Raymond for the extra point, and it's good. So oh, you've got 12 minutes and eight seconds to play in the first quarter as Kerwin Bell hooks up with Frankie Neal on what will be a 33 yard pass run play for the touchdown. First down, little fake of the sweep, linebackers coming up, good throw, Neal is an outstanding receiver. Probably the most talented in the Florida, on the Florida team. You can see his running ability. Number 21 catches the ball, the safety man McCray misses the tackle and he walks in for the touchdown. Waltzes in, I should say. They made it look easy. Did somebody bust a play in that secondary? No, the linebackers were fooled up on the line of scrimmage, and the safety man who had to make the tackle missed it. Neal just gave him a little limp leg and pulled it back, and the safety man went into the ground, and Neal went There are the, the telephone numbers for the BYU poll as to whether or not the Cougars ought to be ranked number one. And uh, they had to put in some extra lines because the telephone traffic, as you would expect, was quite heavy from the state of Utah. So they've added those two numbers at the bottom of the picture. The rest of the country responding yes and no to those numbers at the top of the picture. And I am frankly startled at the number of calls that have been received. And probably in reality, at least that many or more have been delayed or turned away because they simply didn't get through. What is the number, Keith? Uh, do we have an estimate on the number this time? Well, last time it was around 300,000, last I heard. So here's the kickoff now by Raymond. No, it's Chris Perkins who does the kicking off. It's kicked short. Florida State comes up with it as Dwayne Denson brings the ball back across the 20 and out to about the 23. Florida isn't particularly interested in kicking the ball into the end zone. Their philosophy on the kicking game is keep it in play. Keith, they have a great philosophy and tactic I think if the defensive receiver if the receiving team moves over to the side of the field they kick it across like they did then if the receiving team doesn't move over they kick it right down the boundary where it, it restricts the field and they can compress the coverage and they've led the nation in uh, coverage on kickoff now, well there's the number Frank it's uh, the counted calls are 166,000 plus Keith, with averaging over 40,000 an hour. That's incredible. I'm just in. startled I by it. I'm I surprised agree. that reaction is so strong. Both sides. All right, it's first down for the Seminoles. They trail 7 to nothing, and Coker hands the ball inside to Cletus Jones, the fullback. And this is a very key man today in what Florida State feels they have to do. That fullback has got to pick up some yards for them. The and run. the rain is just pelting down. Keith, Florida State is a has good balance between running and passing. 65% running, 
35% pass. If they can't set up the runs, their passing is no good. As we look at Bobby Bowden, what a fantastic year that he has had. Well, you said, too, uh, uh, earlier that uh, most of their passes are play action. So if you're not getting something out of the run, the play action business doesn't mean anything. That's exactly right. That's reason they must establish the run. Rosie Snipes coming back the other way. There's a penalty flag over there. As Snipes comes up across the 40 and will have a first down, but let's see about the penalty. Well, while we're looking at the penalty, Roosevelt Snipes is an exciting football player. Tremendous breakaway speed. Uh oh On the sweep. One of the things that uh, Lyman uh, often do on the sweep play where they have to really lock on to the defensive man. So that uh, they get, let's see, left of the screen, Lonzo Johnson, number 93, is a great football player. There goes the left arm out. If they're going to use their hands, they have to put it within the frame of the body inside the arms. Now with a grab a hold of him right there. There it is. The right hand. The right hand's got the number, number nine, and that is holding. And what was it? Key five or fifth ten? Ten yard penalty? Yep. Yeah. And it cost him a first down as well. Snipes has run for over 150 yards in the last two ball games. The ball is marked now back inside the 20. Near the 18. And Coker gives it to Snipes again. And again, you've got a penalty flag as once again Roosevelt runs for a big game. But again, it's a linesman throwing the flag. Keith, uh, the right end jumped offside for Florida. Alonzo Johnson, the yes. outside linebacker. Jumped offside. He was a little bit. Here he is, number 93. Very eager to get back in that backfield. He leads the team in sacks, he leads the team in tackles. He's playing the same position as All-American Wilbur Marshall played last year. And with one game ago, he has already recorded as many sacks as Wilbur did during the last season. It's raining so hard now, it's hard to see the marker across the field. It's third down and about, looks like 12. Mitz, Williams, Williams, Moten, Johnson. You saw the secondary reflected there. Here's Coker in the driving rainstorm, handing the ball inside. And carrying is Jones, and Jones is held after about a two-yard pickup. Keith, it was third and one. We cannot see the down markers because the Florida team is out so close that I cannot even see them, the chain link. You can't see it at all. No. It was third and one. Third and, of, yeah. yeah, one and a half. So it looks like it's a little bit shy, but they're going to measure. There's the rain. You can see it's coming down in torrents. Well, it was so pretty and sunny after that first rain shower today, and now it's a deluge, and they're just short. When Florida State lines up to punt, they're going to be kicking the ball to the number one punt return in the nation, and Ricky Natiel, very much the type of player that's dangerous, can make any play, either reception or a punt return, go for the distance. 96-yard touchdown pass against Georgia on the reception. He's a sophomore, 5'9", 180, out of Archer, Florida. Lewis Berry, averaging just under 43 yards per punt, now in to kick for Florida State with 10.39 to play, and the Gators leading 7 to nothing on a 33-yard scoring strike. Bell. Rick uh, Frankie Neal. Frankie Neal. Neal is the ultimate the receiver. Florida, just like Florida State, used four wide receivers. Just got our first flash of lightning. High snap, but it's handled nicely by Barry. And he gets off a fairly decent kick, considering the elements. As Natiel takes it on the 30 and sits down right there. 37 yard punt for Lewis Barry. And we've got a timeout on the possession. Talking with Coach Bobby Bowden of Florida State yesterday, I asked him about the intensity of the training coming into the game. Yeah, there's a lot of difference between being tense and intense. We want our boys intense, but not tense. Because every time we get tense, we fumble, and we drop passes, and we can't execute. So our boys have shown some intensity, and I think they'll play with intensity. I've got to just be careful it's not too tense and cause errors, and it'll just get you murdered. Well, they've had an example of tense already, haven't they? They've had a couple of penalties and a fumble. On first down, the Gators go to work from the 30, and the pitch comes back to Neil Anderson, and the 215-pounder from Graceville, Florida. Slashes, and they, I think slash is the right word for him. He really cuts through that hole. That's a good term, Keith, because the Florida offense, even though they 
threaten wide, they invariably cut back. They look for a crack, a soft seam in there that the, those two big running backs can cut back. Seldom do they try to go around in, mostly inside plays. Rain continuing to pour down. And it looks like it might be a sizable storm. On second down, they take it over the left side. And stepping in is Fred Jones, a sophomore linebacker from Miami, to stop Neil Anderson. So they'll be looking at third down and about four. When you face the Florida offensive line, which averages 282 and has good quick feet, you must stun on defense and you must try to get in the gap and let your linebackers make the tackle. Keith, that was a perfect example. Fred Jones filled that hole for no gain. Now they go wide. Obvious passing play, a third and a long four. Kerwin Bell getting some heat now. Gets his pass away, and the penalty flag is called as the pass is intercepted. No, he didn't hold on. He dropped it. But there's a flag there, Keith. There's interference on one or the other. I, they were both struggling to try to get open, and uh, let's see who they called it on. Definitely interference on one or the other. Florida State man may have backed into him. No, they've called a hold on the Florida State Seminoles. Keith, they, they both, both the receiver and the defensive back were just struggling. With, let's see if we can detect. Uh, let's check it out right here. 21 Neal slips a little bit. Now he's going out to scramble over the side. And let's see the interference. When he runs right by him, you can see the defensive back grabs him right there. Good call by the official. Number eight, Riley. Good scramble by uh, Bell, though, Keith. Let the play develop, uh, avoiding the loss. It is raining. Pouring. It's hard to see across the field. Bell back. And goes deep with it. And it is caught by Frankie Neal. Inside the 10 of Florida State. But there's a flag down, Keith. Back at the line of scrimmage. Neal is just going to out jump Jarvis Williams. Now, number 17 is just a freshman, but you can see the speed. Neal runs right by him, and then he stops, and Williams, number 17, well, he made a bad timing on the jump, but the play is, I guess, being called back. Coming back. The penalty is against Florida. We've had a lot of penalties. I guess that's the intensity that... Uh, Bobby Bowden was mentioning big ball game like this sometimes get penalties early the Gators would have had the ball first and goal at the Florida State oh, seven instead they're backed up now wiping out a 43 yard pickup on that fast play Jarvis Williams the right halfback that got beat on that particular pass has four interceptions he's had an outstanding year for a freshman coaches are very confident in his play on that occasion he just timed his jump wrongly it'll be first down and 15 with a ball at the Florida 44 Gators are leading seven to nothing with eight minutes and 45 seconds and right now I would suggest a rain delay I would too I've never seen it rain in a hard in football game in my life penalty flag again as the Gators break another big play with Neil Anderson carrying the ball and that flag came out of the pocket of the referee who lines up behind the offensive backfield and it's against Florida. Let's go down to Tim Fran and see what it's like on the field, Keith. Poor Timmy. <laughs> hey, listen, you guys talked about how hard it is raining. There's no question about that, but it also rained prior to the game, and the field was in bad shape then. It's Bermuda grass. It has a high crown, so it's coming off here to the side, but the footing is still very, very poor. Frank and Keith in the middle of the field. They do have on their long cleats, which is helping somewhat, but every player has come off has told me that the footing is very, very treacherous. This is terrible. You're going to be fun to ride uh, <laughs> home with. Look, Keith, I don't ever remember seeing it rain this hard. Mm. First down and 20 now as they go up the middle with the fullback John L. Williams carrying. And he's out to about the 43. And it'll bring up second down and long. Second down at about 17. Florida State was so worried on their defensive strategy of getting split when they go into a stunt. If they can just avoid the big play, they think they can do a decent job of containing the Florida offense. 
That goes Bell to throw it on second and long. And the pass is incomplete. The pass intended for the fullback, John Williams, swinging out. And Jesse Solomon came in and laid a lick on Kerwin Bell. I'm sure that if I was coaching in this ball game, I'd be glad to have the seven-point lead right now, Keith. Here's the Gators have outscored their opponents in the first quarter by an unbelievable number of 90, what was it, 90 to 19? Tells you something about their game plan. I can barely see the field. I cannot see across the field. Bell back to throw, goes deep with it. And it is incomplete. Interference call, Keith, on one or the other again. Flag dropped, it looks like, on the 28-29 yard line. Is that a flag or am I just... It might be a puddle. It's not a flag, it's a puddle. Okay. Earl Williams was covering Gary Roll on the play. And it is just raining at an incredible rate. Cedric Jones is deep now as Florida comes out to punt. And Craig Criswell gets it away. Jones will let it go, and it's going to roll out of bounds. Down around the six or seven yard line. A 52 yard punt by Ray Criswell. He is an offensive weapon. Here are a couple of fellows that Bobby Bowden would certainly like to have in uniform today. The great running back, Greg Allen, who has had knee surgery, and Don DeCenso, one of the big linemen. But um, there's some possibility, I guess, that Greg Allen could come back for the Citrus Bowl game against Georgia. But right now, the Seminoles have a major problem. They have terrible weather conditions right now. The ball is back up on their six-yard line, and uh, it's it'll be a miracle if they can handle it well back this territory. The Roosevelt Snipe gets a great block, and Snipes comes around the corner and picks up a first down, but there is a penalty flag thrown again by one of the linesmen. Keith, I've never seen so many flags dropped in, in the first eight, seven and a half minutes, a little over seven and a half minutes, but Florida evidently, excuse me, Florida State was evidently holding on the sweet play again. Looked like they're flanked for this time. Well, Chris Wells punt has pinned them deep, and now they come out and get themselves a first down, and somebody's caught holding, and it's half the distance. So they're back on the three. And I don't see anything anywhere that suggests this rain's going to stop anytime soon. Half the distance to the goal. That's Florida State. Still fun for him. You can just barely see the field. Forget seeing across the field. <laughs> Poker ends it inside. Carrying is Cletus Jones. And he bangs it out to about the eight or nine as Georgia Tech is rolling over Georgia. Well, that is a surprise. Georgia Tech has had a good year, but it's supposed to been a close ball game. There's your surprise. Yes, it is. Ray Perkins came back. And what a big ball game in that intrastate rivalry. And Army going to a bowl in Boston College got it going in the second half to beat Holy Cross. Poker pitches the ball to Snipes. Snipes cuts through a tackler and runs it up to the 19. And that will be a first down. Roosevelt Snipes, number 20, is not very big, about 175 pounds or 80. Not supposed to be a good mudder, but he has made some good runs already. Made a good cut. Watch this cut right here in the mud. Now, Florida State has got to open up a little bit of a gash there because they're, they're, it's not as big as the Florida backs. And you can see it make people miss him, hold on the ball, and make a nice game. And it's first down for the Seminoles out on their 19. Florida leading in this ball game. First quarter of play, 7 to nothing. They got the touchdown before the range really came down. And going up the middle with it is Cletus Jones, and he pops a big one. And he's got another Seminole first down out across the 30. Cletus Jones runs the first leg of the option play. A little bit of a trap right there. The linebacker gets blocked by the tackle coming in. Al Nada, and Jones is in the secondary. Finally brought down, like Siebel misses him, and Adrian White makes the tackle, but not before first down. At the 32-yard line. Two big first downs keep coming off your goal line. Very yeah. important. From the three-yard line, they moved it out to the 32. Now the 
Franklin. It snipes again. Gets a good block on the corner. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 45. Another first down for the Seminoles. Oh, that's a tremendous run. I'm just surprised at that, that, that uh, Florida State. Look at the water, Keith. That shows what the players are faced with, and you have to give them credit. Florida State coming off their goal line, Snipes and Jones alternating. Good blocking here by 42. Jones, watch him right there. Knocks the line back and forth back. Good block. I couldn't see the number by one of the guards pulling out. Number 53. And it's first down at the 45. That's Jones, the fullback. And he's got four yards as he goes to the 49. The defensive people, though, have got to lose a little bit in this kind of weather. Well, so the offensive people. The problems you have offensively with a wet ball it eliminates much of your offense. You've got to have safe running plays, things that you can operate. It kind of cuts down on your passing so the defense can crowd the line of scrimmage. The offensive linemen lose their footing, Keith. It's hard. I'm amazed that they're making these good blocks because the footing is what makes for an offensive lineman successful block. Your offense is very limited in, this, in under these conditions. It's second down at about eight, I think. This is Snipes, and he crosses midfield and gets to about the Florida 48. He's got to go down to the Florida 45 now to get his first down. So he needs three more yards. Where well, the Chicago Bears are in the playoffs in the NFL. They've won their Central Conference. Uh, Central Division in the National Conference, and they go west to play the San Diego Chargers, who are a bruised and battered football team. Their pride stung low. It'll be a fun ball game. It's the run versus the pass. On ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Snipes now with five carries and 50 yards in the game. Third down and three. Poker rolls it out. Dumps the pass off. Pass is caught for the tight end. I believe it is 85. Pat Carter. The big freshman, 6'4", 230, and the Seminoles have a first down just inside the Florida 40. One of those bootlegs without a personal protector. You can see that uh, Coca's rolling to the right without any blockers in front of him. Now he just lobs the ball over. That's not all. Those are the kind of passes that you want to throw. Carter's a big freshman tight end, 250 pounds. Uh, according to his coach who weighed him teeth yesterday, gained 15 pounds since he's been on their training table. And the Seminoles, first down near the Florida 38. Poker makes it, hands it up the middle, and Jones, the fullback, pops it big. Down inside the 30, down to the 27, another Seminole first down. Here's Jim. In our national telephone poll on the question of whether BYU deserves to rank number one, the yeses are closing the gap on the noes. We remind you there are four active telephone numbers, two of which can be used by anyone anywhere, including those of you in Utah, two of which are for Utah only, and we are told that the trunk situation in Utah is still very difficult. If you're having trouble getting through, keep calling. We're not deciding whether or not they're number one here, only giving us all something to talk about. Keith? Hey, Jimmy. You lucky? <laughs> Somewhere where it's dry. Here's a handoff to Roosevelt Snipes, and Snipes with the surge gets only a yard or so as they're now really beginning to splash around in what is going to become a very muddy football field. This is Bermuda grass, though, and it may hold up pretty well, and finally we get a little crack in the storm, and it may quit on us after a while, I hope. Number 56, Newton, the middle, line, middle guard, whips the son of block there and comes in and makes a great play. Tim Newton, who was second-team all-conference last year and possibly an All-American, second-leading tackle. It's second down and about nine. Coker pitches the ball back to Snipes again. Roosevelt gets one block, but slips out of the tackler's hands and get him quick before he drowns. Good running by Snipes in the right up the middle. Jones is making good runs. Now here's Johnson, number 93, probably the best defensive player on the uh, Florida football team. Keeps his position. Now he comes out the line and saves a possibly a big run. They'll get some help from the cornerback, Williams. Ball moves down inside the 23 of Florida now, where it's third down and about five. Back goes Coker. 
Down the middle with a pass. Good to Carter to tight end. Carter goes down in a big splash at about the 18, and he's going to be close to his first down. Here's Pat Carter. Nine receptions for 138 yards. Just a freshman, a true freshman. Coach told me yesterday, he put him on the scales, and he's gained, came in at 235. He's 252, Keith. Just a rookie. But what a potential football player he is. All the physical tools you need. Gonna be short. That much. Keith, I can see the other side of the field now. Yes, starting <laughs> to let up. Well. That's how the water just running off the field and running into the sewer. That's because of the turtle back field. The water is draining right over to the side, and the drains on the side cannot pick up the, the water fast enough. We're going to have a flood out to the field that rains much more. It's fourth down and two feet. And the Seminoles are going. This is the 13th play of this possession for Florida State. With two and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Pitch it to Roosevelt Snipes. He's got his first down as he penetrates to the 16. Florida moved into a gap defense, and it was a perfect call by Bobby Bowden's staff going outside and cutting back as soon as Snipes saw just a little bit of daylight. He lowered his shoulder and came in for the necessary yardage for the first down. There's number 20. Keith, he's had, look, eight rushes, 58 yards in this rainstorm against one of the best defensive teams in America. That is really, really something to be proud of. Ball is on the 15 precisely. First down for the Seminoles. Order leading by seven. Hooker hands it inside to the fullback. And there's a gain of two. There's a little brightening sky. The rain is less now than it has been for the last half an hour. Well, the Florida defense is basically a technique playing defense. Keith, they do very little stunning. They have so much confidence in the size and speed of their linemen and linebackers. They play straight football, and Florida State's doing a good job of blocking them and getting a little crease and making some yardage. Second down and eight. The ball on the 13. Snipes again. Hole in the middle to the 10. If he had been able to get footing and cut back to his right, he might well have scored. Well, here's old Sodden himself, Tim Brent. Chuck, we've, uh, or Keith, rather, we've talked about the field and the conditions, and you mentioned what it was like on the field. If you could see this, this is what the players have to look forward to when they come off. The bench area is completely flooded. It is almost up to my knees. And the trainers are trying to get the equipment all up on top of the benches because the water's halfway up. Something they probably weren't prepared for, Keith. <laughs> no, I don't think so. How can you prepare for a deluge like that? Look at that water. That's enthusiasm. Now that's enthusiasm. You. That's you, Keith. <laughs> that's you. Oh, <laughs> Ball is on the 10. Timeout call by Florida State with 55 seconds to play. They are looking at a third down and five on the Florida 10. As Florida State comes up on third down and five at the Gator 10. Gator show blitz. Now they pull out of it as Coker checks off. Gets his pass off into the corner, and it is too long. Beyond the field of play, and penalty flags are thrown. It's against Florida. Keith, the ball was not catchable, so I would think he'd wipe it off. But, I would uh, think so, too. But it was it happened out of bounds. It happened out of bounds, and they're going to call it against uh, Ricky Eastman, I believe. Uh, he's checking Darren Holloman. Holloman was going on the fade route, the same pattern that we saw Oklahoma State score on the last play of the half, and uh, Coke was just trying to lay the ball up to the boundary right in the corner. Eastman is a senior. Let's. Keith, I think the call is that Easton did not turn and play the ball. No. Had Easton turned and played the ball, I don't believe they would have called any penalty. But the fact that he made contact, looking the other way, not playing the ball, most officials will call the flag. But they penalized him 
to the two-yard line. The new rule is not no penalty inside the two unless the play originates inside the two. And it's first and goal for Florida State. Fumble. Florida got it. Florida's got it. The quarterback Coker coughs it up. He couldn't come away from the center snap for the ball. And Tommy Duhart, number 78, a freshman out of Bell Glade, Florida, pounced on it for the Gators. And the Seminoles, after starting from their own three in a driving rainstorm, have it first and goal at the two and turn it over. Keith, I believe there was a little bit of a busted play. Coaches know that any time you snap the ball over ten times, you have increased the probability of a fumble or a mistake many times over. And that's exactly what happened. You execute perfectly up the middle with Jones, outside with Snipes, and the wet ball had something to do with it. An option play was coming up. Coker lost the handle and couldn't fall on it. 15 plays, 92 yards, 6 minutes and 43 seconds, and some of the wind goes out of the sail as the Gators now start with John L. Williams from the 6, and he punches his way out close to the 9. Let's go back and look at the interference call again. The defensive back, incidental bumping, is not a penalty, but if the defensive back is not playing the ball, Issa number 8 is not playing the ball right now. He's running right into the receiver. He must avoid the receiver if he doesn't play the ball. Any contact right there, since he's not playing the ball, is an automatic foul. Second down and about seven for the Gators out near their own nine. They stay with the ground game as Lorenzo Hampton, a 210-pound senior, finds some wiggling room and comes out close to a first down as he gets across the 15. First quarter is over here in Tallahassee, and the Florida Gators lead the Seminoles seven to nothing. Well, we can see the new State House, Tallahassee being the state capital city. That new building erected during the governorship of Ruben Askew. And it's been a while since we've been able to see that. Well, we can see across the field. So Here are the numbers. We can see that Florida State had the best of it, except on the scoreboard when they couldn't cash it in close to the goal line. Front. Gators try to take it up the middle with uh, Lorenzo Hampton carrying, and Fred Jones steps in there and pops him just over the line of scrimmage. It was third down and about one, and the spot looks like it might very well give him a first down. They'll measure, however, it's that close. It's and I don't know now. It, uh, it'll be close. It's going to be close, Steve. The Florida State offense did what they were supposed to do, except when they got close, you've got to stick it in the end zone. You move from one end of the field to the other, you need to put it in there, obviously. But they did keep the Florida offense over on the bench, that big offensive line, and those very talented running backs. They've got the first down. Irwin Bell, a freshman out of Day, Florida. He's 6'3", 190. He's a big fellow. Keith, he was thrown into the starting lineup on Wednesday when the starting quarterback, Dominic, was injured. He had three days' notice before the Miami football game and went in and played a very credible performance and has been gaining confidence from his teammates, coaches, and fans and himself ever since that starting game. First down now for the Gators. The ball is out just beyond the 16. Hand the ball off to the eye back. And bolting up the middle goes Hampton. And when he goes down, he slides along for another yard or two. Georgia Tech beats Georgia 35-18. It's been a while since the wreck beat the Bulldogs. Keith, I was going to ask how long? How many years? Five, six? Uh, Both of us from Georgia, we ought to know. <laughs> six, six years, maybe. Sure, alma mater. I know it. It's been a long time, Keith. <laughs> Alabama coming up with a win over Auburn today, and Army beat Navy. Al Auburn being knocked out of the Sugar Bowl, too, Keith. Now LSU is into the Sugar Bowl. And Auburn goes to the Liberty to play the Razorbacks. And coming around the corner carrying the ball is John L. Williams, brought down by Eric Williams. And he's going to have another Gator first down. This is what Florida can do to you. They can just grind it out, and they're up on the 31-yard line now. That's their style of play with a big offensive line, averaging 282 pounds, three running backs, two fresh tailbacks that keep in there all the time with Anderson and Hampton just alternating every six plays so that they can pound away at you, lean on you, and pound away. They set them up. Almost seven yards deep from that eye back. And here he goes again. And here's a penalty flag. That one came from the umpire. Right on the offensive center, it looked like. Uh, yep. We might have a dash of sunshine yet before the day expires. 
We need it. The Florida State defense, Keith, is outweighed so that they just cannot play their basic defense. They've got to move over and shade and try to get some penetration through the gaps and cause something to happen. When you do this, the risk is that the offensive team cuts you off and splits a little area, and you end that secondary for a long game. That's what Florida State has to be concerned with. So the Gators are backed up by the holding call. Just beyond their own 20 now, where it is first down and 20. Got to go to the 40, just back to the 41. Florida State showing the five-man front now as Florida goes double wide to the top of the picture, but hand the ball inside and being wrestled down is John Williams, the fullback. And they've got him right around the 23-yard line. Here again, Tim Brent. Keith, they just finished working on number 20, Rosie Snipes, the running back for Florida State. You know the situation, the record-breaking All-American, Greg Allen. He's out with just arthroscopic surgery uh, two weeks ago. So there's a lot of pressure on Snipes to stay healthy in this ball game. And in that end of the first quarter, when the fumble was loose, he went after it, bowed his back the wrong way, and he says it's sprained a little bit. But he's, he's walking now. You can see him on the sidelines. He's going to be back in the ball game. Thank you, Tim. Let's put the ball on the 22 now. And they need 19 yards for the first down. Bell fumbles it, picks it up, and they get him inside the 20. He dropped the snap. Really slick, wet, and muddy. There's your phone numbers as we continue the, the question of should BYU be ranked number one. Utah only using the uh, bottom two numbers and the rest of the nation the top two numbers. And uh, this is what's been going on now. We're over 200,000 calls already with the nose leading the yeses. That's just an opinion poll. Nothing scientific about it. Oh, another fumble, and the Seminoles go pounding in and may have the ball. No, the nope. Florida's going to yeah. keep it. The referee is uh, calling it Florida's ball. Here again is that problem, the wet ball. The son is trying to get out and step the ball and make his block at the same time. It's just difficult. That's the toughest thing you have to do in a wet, on a wet field, is get the ball, the transaction, between the center and the quarterback. But he, I think Bell had that, Keith. He just dropped it going back. I believe the snap was good. Lucky to get the ball back. All right, Chriswell is in to punt for the Gators. And Cedric Jones is back. Soggy conditions. It's still raining, and the ball's going to roll across midfield and roll dead at the Florida State 47. That was a 37-yard punt. No, it no, it was a bad snap. You can see on that play, the ball did not hit the hands of Kerwin Bell, the quarterback. It hit his leg and went right to the ground. We've got 11.06 to play in the first half with the Gators leading the Seminoles 7 to nothing. The Florida State Seminoles have sent Eric Thomas out now at quarterback. Thomas having recovered from a hip pointer. The Florida Gators leading in this ball game 7-0. Their season ends after this game. Florida State goes on to play Georgia in the Citrus Bowl. Thomas has thrown for 13 touchdowns and only three interceptions this year. The first three Florida State possessions resulted in a fumble, a punt, and a fumble. That won't get it done, Keith. Nope. Not when you're the underdog. You've got to play near a flawless game if you expect to beat the favorite team. Barwick's got to snap it out of a puddle. Pitch comes back to Roosevelt Snipes, and the Florida Gator defensive flow is outstanding, and they may have him for a yard or so loss on the play. Florida Gators have appealed uh, the sanctions uh, by the NCAA. Of course, uh, that appeal will be heard, and uh, the true extent of those uh, sanctions by the national body will not be known for some time. But the Southeastern Conference imposed its own sanctions on Florida, and uh, that included keeping them out of the Sugar Bowl, but they do claim their first Southeastern Conference championship ever. And back goes Eric Thomas on second down and 11. Nobody to throw the ball to. Hit and fumbles the football, and it's going to remain in the possession of Florida State. Outstanding coverage by the Florida secondary. One of the things the Florida coaches told me, if there's anything on our team we are concerned about, is the pass coverage. Tennessee, Cincinnati, and the passing teams have hurt their coverage and in their secondary and they've made a lot of yardage and so they I guess they're glad the rain is here Keith because it does hamper the passing of Florida State good coverage that time 
Florida is the team that struck for the big play. Shot from Bell to uh, Frankie Neal, 33-yard touchdown and a 7-0 lead. This is Roosevelt Snipes running very well. And Snipes runs it up to about the 47, 48-yard line, which will be roughly uh, the original line of scrimmage. Here on ABC, we have the Gator Bowl for you on, in prime time on Friday night, December 28. Matches South Carolina's Gamecocks and the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. And on January 1st, of course, at 8 Eastern, 7 Central time, we'll have the Sugar Bowl. And the pairing now set in the Sugar Bowl with Nebraska's Cornhuskers playing the Bayou Bengals of LSU. Auburn losing today to Alabama, and that took them out of the Sugar Bowl. Darius Punt is in the air. Sybil backs up for the Gators. Back to his own nine. Retreats to the eight. And down at the ten. Did he fumble? He may have fumbled it. They're scrambling for the ball, but I believe that the referee had called it. No. Nope. Well, let's see. Well, they haven't signaled yet. One has signaled Florida State's ball. The Seminoles have it. It is Paul McGowan covering the ball for Florida State at the Florida nine. And you've got a Seminole shaken up. That's Jerome McCoy, slow to get up. Sybil, number 25, is a senior, a quarterback. They put him back to handle the ball so that they would assure good, good handling of it. Good uh, experience back there. Let's see where the ball pops out. Yes. It came loose. It came loose on that solid hit by two. Seminole players, the ball popped right out. McCoy was one of those uh, making the hit, and he's now being helped off the field. Here's 25 civil. One on the right, head gear, just popped the ball right out. Cannot see his number. Looks like it's 28. I believe it was 28. Rocky Kinsey made the hit that knocked it out, knocked the ball out. And it's first down and goal for Florida State as the Gators turn it over now. Ball on the Florida nine. Florida has nothing ball game. The Gators leading. Florida has not been scored, has touchdown scored against it much in 17 quarters. They blitz it, but they beat the blitz by handing it inside to the fullback, and he doesn't get much. Jones bangs in for a yard, and that's all. Leave Kenzie number, well, that's number 38, uh, oh, 38. McGowan. Yes, yes he's McGowan. the one, his headgear goes right into the ball. Sybil being a senior, a former quarterback. Should have protected that football under these conditions, both hands over it, so it could not have been knocked out. Now you've got the big freshman Carter going into the ball game with Galen White coming out for Florida State. So let's see whether or not they put him into the play here. Jesse Hester has not seen the ball as yet for Florida State because the weather conditions haven't allowed much passing. But now Eric Thomas rolls it out and wants to throw it. Does throw it into the end zone, and it's incomplete. The pass intended for Pete Patton, so they had a double tight end alignment and Patton couldn't come down with it. I guess it's nope. I thought there's another flag. There is a flag. Is. Yeah. Good coverage by the Florida secondary. On the little bootleg pass without a personal protector, Thomas was rolling out, trying to get one on one situation. Well, they pick it up now. There's no penalty. So they eat the flag. Once again, the Florida defense is, as we say in coaching, rising to the occasion with stopping the run, forcing Florida State into passing situation. Here's the gate of defense is not allowed a running back to rush for over 100 yards. This season has allowed only three rushing touchdowns and none in the last 17 quarters. It is now third down and goal, Florida State. Thomas gives it to Snipes, and Snipes runs it into the middle of the field and stopped at the six-yard line. It'll bring up fourth down, and almost surely the place-kicking unit will come on. Sybil made the stop for Florida. Well, the Seminoles were down first and goal on the Florida two, turned it over after driving from their own three. Now in comes Derek Schmidt. He's the top freshman scorer in the nation with 88 points. This will be a 23-yard try with Coker holding. He's the amazing thing about this young freshman. He kicked the first attempts in the early in the season in a row. Bangs the wet ball up and through. And the Seminoles get on the scoreboard with 7 minutes and 42 seconds to play in the first half. 
It is now 7-3. The Gators lead. Kerwin Bell, number 12, walk-on freshman, the glue. His coach, Galen Hall, says this about the young man. We do not ask Kerwin to do a great amount of things, but uh, what we do ask him to do, he can perform. And uh, I think uh, as the season went along, I, I'm sure that the players questioned Kerwin's ability early. But I think as, as the season went along, he has shown our players that he, they can depend on him. And I, I think that has, you know, just uh, gelled our football team that they, they do believe in Kerwin. Galen Hall, of course, offensive coordinator at Oklahoma for 18 seasons. Prior to that was at West Virginia. And, of course, he played quarterback at Penn State. So he knows something about it. Here's the kickoff by the Seminoles now. It's a relatively short kick taken at the nine-yard line by Gary Roll, a wide receiver, and he comes back out to about the 22. Here's Jim Lampley. Two hours left in our telephone poll on the question of whether or not you believe Brigham Young should be ranked number one. Remember, not a scientific sampling, only a reflection of the sentiments of those of you who are able to get through on the telephone lines. Busy signals still the norm. There are four telephone numbers. Those of you outside of Utah can use only the top two. Those of you in Utah can use any of the four telephone numbers. Keep calling as we continue to have fun with this. Back to Keith Jackson. And here come the Gators now. First down from their 22, 7 to 3, Florida leading. Big hole, big play, Neil Anderson. One man to beat. And he can't do it. But he has put the football at the Florida State 16. Martin Mayhew was the man that came across the field with the angle and ran him down. Neil Anderson weighs 212 pounds. 63-yard run. Good cut. Once the block is made right there by uh, number 74, Jeff Zimmerman, the big offensive guard, pulling, you can see the speed as 43 McCrary misses the tackle. Now Mayhew, 32, is the only one that's got a chance. The off halfback comes and knocks him out of bounds before the score. Outstanding blocking by the left side, Brown, of the line, Brown, and also Henson. 7.27 to go as Florida responding now to the Seminoles field goal. And they're sitting on the Florida State 16-yard line, first down. Neil Anderson had an 80-yard touchdown run against Tennessee. He's rushed for 822 yards. He also is the fourth leading rusher in Florida history right now. What a fine run that was. Double wide for the Gators. And Hampton now in at the eye back position, the deep man. And he's got the ball. And he's inside the 10 yard line, down to the nine, picked up seven yards before Henry Taylor brought him down. Galen Hall told me yesterday that the sub the deep the offensive backs alternate themselves, substitute themselves. Hits 58 Taylor, the leading tackler for the Seminoles, gets called inside momentarily, then Bounces back to the outside, and uh, does he help in the play? Yes, he finally makes the play, right. along with McCrary, number 43. But a Anderson, after that long run, Keith took himself out. Hampton ran in. Anderson's back now, and Anderson has the ball, and he hits the head to the six, and he'll be close to a first down. I tell you, running 63 yards on a soggy field is a uh, <laughs> good point. Mm. It makes it gets you tired, and he took himself out for one play, and the coaches put him back in. After that run, he ought to have a chance to score. That's the way we coaches think. Give him the chance. He earned it. There he is, Neil Anderson, number 27. You can see what he has done in his career, and he is just a junior. Chain stretched out. Looks like a first down. It is. Six minutes and 40 seconds. The play in the first half. That long run, Keith, is exactly what Coach ba Bobby Bowden told me yesterday. He feared the most. It's those big backs finding a little crease and using the power to break the line of scrimmage and then turning on the speed that they have. Three of the best running backs on any team probably seen this year, at least the biggest and best. Well, uh, well you see the water now is drained <laughs> off uh, considerably. Good drainage system. I'd like to know what it is, Keith. <laughs> 
Here's the pitch. Goes to Anderson. Anderson is hammered at the five. Linebacker Philly. Taylor and Jones. Well, the two linebackers, you just couldn't play a sweep any better. The lineman anchored, leaving the linebackers a chance to fill the hole, and they made a head-up tackle on the Anderson and brought him down immediately. It's second down and goal from the five. For the Gators. A lot of people saying this football team may be as good as anybody. Keep it as a complete football team, I think, as we've seen. Bell back. Lobs it in the end zone. Good. Caught by Williams, the fullback for the touchdown. Bobby Raymond now for the extra point try. The holder is the punter, Ray Criswell. Little chip shot is up and good. So at 5.44 to go in the first half, the Gators increase the lead to 14 to 3. A little bootleg pass to the fullback in the flat. This forces the linebacker, Jones, to try to cover him, and you can see that he had a little bit of an edge on it. The pass was perfect, and Williams takes it in the end zone. Score now is 14 to 3. The Florida Gators take it 78 yards in five plays. The big play being a 63 yard sprint by Neil Anderson. John L. Williams got the touchdown, and now the Gators will kick it off to Florida State with Roosevelt Snipes, the deep man. He's the walk on quarterback, Kern Bell, threw his 15th touchdown pass, and that went one up on Steve Spurrier's 14. In 1971. Uh, 1965, excuse me, way back then. Here's your kickoff by Perkins. He kicks it away from Snipes. It is picked up by number 21, Dwayne Denson. And Denson has a problem getting it very far up the field. It'll be short of the 15. Again, here's Jim. One fascinating note on a Division I AA quarterfinal game, Keith. Middle Tennessee beat Indiana State 42-41 in triple overtime. The overtime format, if you go into overtime tied, each team gets the football at the 15-yard line with four downs to score. First overtime, they both got touchdowns, 28-28. Second overtime, again, both touchdowns, 35-35. Third overtime, Indiana State missed a fake extra point kick attempt, and they lost by one point. Back to you, Keith. Tired folks in that crowd. <laughs> I've been to one of those playoffs like that, Keith. It's exciting. From the 14-yard line, Florida State. Rosie Snipes carries the ball and gets out near the 19. I'll tell you this. You're talking about uh, Florida not allowing a running back 100 yards. Mr. Snipes is going to get 100 unless something serious happens because he's got 79 already. Well, Keith, we talked about earlier that I think it's very important. Florida State's going to have a chance this ball game. They're going to have to rush for at least as a team 150 to 200 yards because they play their passes are off their favorite plays and it, they're not looking for the run but far that is there's no success pass on second down Eric Thomas shoots one down the middle it's a fight for the ball it bounced off the receiver and the pass is complete on joint possession and there's a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct against, I believe, Florida for arguing about it, Keith. That was a most unusual play. I don't think I've seen the play. The ball was definitely intercepted. But then the tie, a simultaneous catch, which it wasn't, but both players went down with the ball and belongs to the offensive team. Plus the personal foul penalty, and the Seminoles are going to move on upfield with it. Which could have been an interception. That's a most unusual play. Sybil had the ball. Squirted loose from him. Carter went after it. The two went to the ground fighting over the ball, and simultaneous possession goes to the offense. Here it is again. Overthrown. Badly overthrown. Sybil bounces the ball off of his chest. Now it's just been scrambling, and the two players are fighting for the ball. And the Florida State player had it. It's his ball. And add the penalty, and here are the Seminoles now out at midfield, first down. Florida leading, however, 14 to 3 with 4.53 to play. 
in the first half. Derek Thomas, the Florida State quarterback, that started the first seven games, been out with an injury, has had a good season, and coming back in now, he seems to be regaining his confidence, Keith, having missed the last two games, the most of them. Fumbles a snap. Gets a yard on the play. He stayed after it and picked up a yard and kept the ball. Here Thomas coming into this ball game with 74 out of 154 pass attempts, 48 percent, but he did have 13 touchdowns, Keith, and going into the South Carolina game, he'd only thrown one interception. That third quarter got both teams, if you remember. Mm -hmm. About nine turnovers, it seemed like, in the third quarter of South Carolina. Second season. down and nine, they go to the fullback. And Cletus Jones runs it down inside the Gator 45 to the 44. Cletus Jones has been making good yardage right up the middle, running behind Barwick, the center, who's just a sophomore, not very tall, six feet, but weighs 270 pounds. And the best offensive block of for Florida State is 64, Jamie Dukes. And that is where the Jones has been making the yardage up the middle, right behind those two blockers. Third down and four, Seminole. This is Snipes. Almost, but not quite. He took a lick just as he started to make his cut. And he just simply couldn't get past Tim Newton, who is a rock of a man in the middle of the Florida defense. He's six feet, but he weighs 285 pounds. You can see Newton's limping off just a little bit. He's had a bad ankle and hurt it again in practice on Tuesday. The coaches were not sure he's going to be able to play today. But he is like a refrigerator, Keith, as you said. Six feet, 285 pounds. Who knows, he could gain 10 pounds in any one day. <laughs> All losing. Here's the punt on fourth down and three, and Barry nails it and knocks it well into the end zone and off the field of play. 43-yard punt for him at 3.21 to go in the first half. And the Gators leading the Seminoles 14-3. The Florida Gators, coached now by Galen Hall, who is 7-0 since taking over. In relief of Charlie Pell when Charlie was let go because of the NCAA investigation. The Gators in this first half have been averaging on first down plays 12 yards. That is the winning edge in any football game, and they lead by 14 to 3 because of that. Hampton is the eye back, number seven. He's got it. See that big offensive line? They just put a rumble out there, and by the time you get through hand fighting your way through to the ball carrier, they've got four, five, six yards. Keith, the big thing about this offensive line that uh, Galen Hall tried to explain to me is they're not just big, but they have good feet. They're equally effective blocking for the run as well as protecting the passer. In fact, uh, the two uh, Williams at fullback and Anderson at tailback have only lost a total of 11 yards in 10 ball games. That's less than one yard per game. Shows you how effective they have been. Well, if they didn't have Brumley at center at 250, they'd average right at 300 pounds. Outside comes the play for John Williams. And John L is going to be short of his first down by a couple of yards. Henry Taylor leads the tacklers of the Seminoles by 51. You can see that he wants to get to the football. Look at the determination, the body lead, shooting the gap, and comes over with a perfect tackle. He wraps up a very fine runner in Williams and pulls into the turf. 2.38 to play in the first half. Gators having won their first SEC championship in the school's history. They're two out of five here in the first half on third down conversions. This is third down and two and a half to three. Don't get it. They don't get it as Williams tried to power over the right side. And the Seminoles stunning on the play. Stop him. Here's Tim Brent. Keith, you were talking about Timmy Newton. He came off limp when we just talked. He said he got hit on the back side on his knee. He heard it. He felt something pop a little bit, but he says it's, it's all right. He's going to come back into the ball game. He feels strong. He looks strong, too. <laughs> If I was an offensive center, Keith, I'd hate to have to snap the ball and block Ooh, him, too. Isn't that the I'd ask for help from the guard. Please give me a double-team block on that guy. Somebody loaned me their mule. Play that guy. Fourth down. 
Cedric Jones is deep as Chriswell hits a line drive. Jones is going to let it alone. Probably a very wise decision because it is so soggy that uh, it's not going to rule very far anyway. Well, ABC's Wide World of Sports returns. International Professional Figure Skating Championships is coming Saturday. That'll be next Saturday, December 8th. And it's, it's really an entertaining program. You've got Cousins, you've got Princeton, you've got Babylonia and Gardner. The men's and uh, pairs competition featured on Wide World. Of course, Robin Cousins, a 1980 Olympic gold medalist. Tyler Princeton, an Olympic bronze medalist. High Babylonia, Randy Gardner, U.S. champions. Here's Jesse Hester trying to run a reverse as Florida State tries to get inside the playbook a little bit here and catch the Gators committed inside and uh, doesn't work because Alonzo Johnson spoils it. Alonzo Johnson, I'm sure, was waiting on this play, the reverse, because Florida State has, had been, so, has been so successful with it. He reads it perfectly, plays the quarterback Thomas off, which is a real physical mismatch, and makes the tackle as he comes off the Woodby attempted block. Loss on the play, takes the ball back to the 17-yard line. Second down. Eric Thomas goes down the middle with it, is picked off, and this time it is held by Ricky Eastman. And Eastman gets it back to the 30. So the Seminoles turn it over again. That's their third turnover in the ball game, and one of them came with a first and goal of the Florida two. Well, the pass was very poorly thrown. The ball is wet, evidently, and Thomas just lets it up. You can see that it's not anywhere close to being on target. Way behind the receiver, just thrown it up in the air for Eastman to intercept it, and Florida has another chance. Florida defense has limited Florida State to virtually no big plays, and that was their game plan. Cut out the big plays, prevent the big plays, and they could win this game. 53 seconds to go in the first half. Neil Anderson and John Williams are the setbacks as Kerwin Bell goes back to throw for the Gators. Down the middle with it, and it's incomplete. Yeah. And you're going to get a late flag, a very late flag. The man came across the field because he had a very, well, he had a much better view of it. As Ray McDonald, number nine, was being checked by Martin Mayhew, and Mayhew banged into him, and it's a good call. A good first down call from the, the pass was uncatchable. So it's a 15 yard penalty. New rules. Here it is again. The defensive back is going to come in, I believe. Mayhew, right there. Mayhew, number 32, comes into McDonald. Boom. Makes contact before the ball arrives. Therefore, it is interference, 15 yard penalty. Good call by the Florida staff on first down after pass interception. Go for the down. They used about eight, seven, seven or eight seconds, so it's 46 seconds to go in the first half. Gators are leading 14 to three and trying to add another one. Ball is on the Florida State 15 with Lorenzo Hampton now, the eye back. Bell back to throw. And it's incomplete. The pass intended for Ricky Natillo. So it brings up uh, second down. Now here's Jim. All right, thanks, Keith. In case you were out earlier in the day, Boston College beat Holy Cross 45 to 10. Doug Flutie's career record for passing yardage stopped at 10,579 yards, 11,317 yards total offense. Next in line to break those records, Bernie Kosar of Miami. If he stays at Miami for two more years, he was a redshirt freshman, so it will be his option whether or not to use that fourth year of eligibility. And right now, after two years, Keith, he is 1,500 yards ahead of Doug Flutie's uh, pace. Now, we're going to have a piece at halftime in which we'll talk about the redshirting issue. And certainly, Keith Jackson and Frank Broyles, it will be interesting to see what Kosar chooses to do. Very good point. Depends on how big that sack of money is when they start talking to it. Now, let's have a look at a campus. I was going to say campus of the University of Florida. <laughs> now I can But uh, Chrysler did it for us. 41 seconds now for the Gators. The ball at the 15. Second down. Hell back. 
No pressure. Pass away. Neo, no. Good defensive work that time by the right cornerback, Eric Williams. Toughest thing to do it on pass defense is cover man for man down on the goal line like this, particularly with a play of the ability like Neal has. He has outstanding leaping ability. Jarvis Williams, just a freshman, but watch him. He's right there, makes enough of an effort to knock the ball loose, went right into the chest and out again of Neal, number 21. 35 seconds now, and it's third down for the Gators at the Florida State 15. Well, again to throw. They run him out of the pocket. He's got a lot of green, and he's got a first down. Keith Florida has three timeouts left if they need to use them. They have not used any of their timeouts. I think they just did. 25 seconds to go, and the Gators have now called a timeout. And now, while the Gators are talking, let us have a tour of the Florida State campus. 14 to 3 ball game. 25 seconds to go. First half. And it's getting kind of dark and ugly looking again. We may get more rain. Here's another look at Bell. Florida State covers the receiver. Bell waits. He cocks. He pumps. The receivers are covered. Now he takes off and runs, and there's no sliding in for him. He lowers his head and trying to get as close to the goal line as he possibly could. Ball is near the three, where it's first and goal. They have two more timeouts. Whoa, what a great play by on John Williams by Billy Allen, number 31. Billy Allen, who uh, Bobby Bowden saw playing in a military game when he was in the Air Force in Europe. And Bobby remembered him, and he showed up, and here he is, and he just made a big play for the Seminoles. But there's a penalty. Penalty on the far side of the field by the headlinesman. It's against the Seminoles. Half the distance, Keith. That's a tough break for him. For 20 seconds and uh, two timeouts left. Florida State really desperately needs to hold them if they're going to stay in this ball game. Here it is again. Great play by Allen coming from the left of your screen. Pitch out to John L. Williams, a big, strong fullback with excellent speed. But Allen had blitzed. No one there to block him. No lead black. No block. Blocker, so Allen makes the play. And Florida now has call time to talk some more. They have one timeout remaining, and there are 20 seconds to go in this first half, with the Gators leading 14 to 3. Chicago Bears and the San Diego Chargers on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football next Monday, out on the West Coast. Even We've been having some rain out on the West Coast. We're going to get wet again. San Diego with Dan Fouts. Wasn't that a great game on Monday Night Football a couple weeks ago against the Miami Dolphins to give them the only defeat of the year? He's something. Kellen Winslow is gone for the year, but uh, Mr. Joyner's still there and uh, having uh, another great season. So it'll be the great running back Walter Payton against the great passer Dan Pouch. Keith, I guess I was wrong. I was thinking that I saw that game with the uh, with. San Diego and Miami. It was a Sunday afternoon game. I'm usually playing golf. <laughs> I'm usually playing golf on Sunday. It must have been raining. <laughs> I know you're in bed before the Monday night. <laughs> you're right. Oh, man, don't tell about my age. <laughs> First down and goal. And the ball goes to Anderson. And Neil Anderson is chopped down at the two-yard line. Tough and decision. Florida spends its last time out. Now they've got a tough decision, Keith. I believe I'd go for the two for the three points right here. But their kicker, the accuracy. What he's kicked uh, six in the game this year. He's a pretty good kicker. Turbin Bell, a rangy fellow at 6'3, 190, going over to talk to Galen Hall. Bobby Raymond has kicked 15 straight field goals. And two times in a single game, he's knocked six in. In fact, the last ball game Florida played against Kentucky, he had six field goals. And in this game last year, he kicked six field goals. Tied an NCAA record and also a Southeastern Conference record. No, they decided to go for it one more time. 
probably going to try a play action pass. And if they do, they'll tell Bell to get the ball released. Don't get sacked. If the receivers are covered, throw it back to the end zone. We've got time to kick the field goal after the play. Field is holding up quite well, though, despite the deluge we had. I mean, it rained. We must have had a full inch of rain in about 40 minutes. Going to roll out this way, Keith. A little quick lob job into the end zone. Touchdown. But blocked the, by Neal. But Keith screened off number eight. Penalty just came over. right in and blocked him. Did exactly what uh, the coaches had been trying to get avoided. The outside man came in and blocked the inside man setting up the touchdown. Now, it, it's gone. They waved it off. Here it is again. Number eight. Excuse me. Number nine. McDonald is going to go in and screen. Watch him block off right there. That's as fine a block as I've seen. But that is illegal when a forward pass is thrown. Therefore, it's called back 15-yard penalty and loss of down. And here's the receiver. Watch how wide open he's going to be. Easy touchdown. This is something that we talked about that was put into the playbook as a point of emphasis to try to get the coaches not to teach this. I'm not saying that the coaches teach this, but McDonald goes right in and screams the man off right there. It's his responsibility to leave. The rules clearly say he must avoid the defensive back. It's the responsibility of the offensive man to avoid the defensive back. McDonald, number nine, did not. 15-yard penalty and loss of down. And loss of touchdown. And loss of a touchdown. It'll be a 34-yard field goal try for... Uh, Bobby Raymond now, and that's what we have for you at halftime. Keith, that was the same pass that Florida scored against Miami and was blocked about the same way and went ahead of Miami, and then uh, Miami came back and scored to win the ball game back uh, early in the season. Between 30 and 40 yards, Bobby Raymond is 10 for 10 this year. And this is a 34 yard. And you've already mentioned something that's really amazing to me. He's 15 in a row yep. at this stage. And 62% of the field goal attempts in Division I are successful, were successful last year, which blows my mind. I don't tell it how accurate these people are. We've got an old swinging gate thing here. No, nope. they go back now into a. They can run the swinging gate from that formation. Of course, you just line up your deep and then move over very quickly, Keith. You don't have enough time to get set for the block. With seven seconds to go, the kick is up and good by Raymond, and a penalty flag is on the field again. Offside, Florida State. Kick is good. Points remain with five seconds. To play in the first half. It's now 17 to 3, Florida. In this ball game last year, Florida State had six turnovers, Keith, and they were trying to avoid. So, we, so this ball game, we're going to eliminate the turnovers, and they've had what three already? I believe three in the first yep. half. Yep. When you turn the ball over, when you're the underdog and turn the ball over. It really takes you out of much chance to win. If you're the underdog, you've got to have ability to control the clock and avoid turnovers. And Florida is, has an outstanding football team. Well, the killer for the Seminoles was taking the ball at their own three and going down to the Florida two, yep. first and goal, and then turning it over. On the, on, what was it? First down, I believe. He, yep. And then Florida State had the ball after recovering a fumble on the eight-yard line of Florida and could get only a field goal out of it. So when you when you put all those things into perspective, the score is 17 to three, and that's about the way the game has been played. Roosevelt snipes is the deep man, but they have not kicked it to him. Keith, this is what we talked about. The coach on the sideline signals to the kicker whether he's going to kick it down this hash mark or across the field, and determines by the lineup of the receiving team, Florida State. They've got Holloman back there with Snipes and Carlton Scott. Pops it up in the air and a fair catch is called on the kickoff and you can make a fair catch and instantly Hassan Jones indicated fair catch 
and by so doing kept the clock from moving. So the Seminoles will have five seconds time for one play. Florida has kicked off this way many times and it was a very much a heads up play by the Florida State team but they were prepared for it knowing exactly what they want to do plus not starting the clock which was a key key point Keith. The clock would have run out had uh, he run the ball. It's at the 24 yard line of Florida State now and almost surely unless they fumbled the football on the snap. And that will do it for the first half of play. 17 to 3 the Florida Gators lead the Florida State Seminoles here at Dope Campbell Stadium in wet Tallahassee. Now here's Tim Brent. <laughs> They've just announced the crowd at 58,930. That is a new Florida State University attendance record. Florida kicks off and they elect to hit this one deep. And it goes to Dalton Scott. And Scott comes back across the 20 to the 21. The Florida defensive unit lines up with Alonzo Bits in there. Alonzo is 260. Tim Newton, that man in the middle, is 285. Keith Williams, the other tackle, 255. Linebackers are Ron Moten, 6'1", 220. Alonzo Johnson, the other outside man, 6'2", 225. Arthur White, 6'1", 220. And Mark Corp, 6'2", and 235. And they put it at the 22. Poker is the quarterback for Florida State. He started the game, he starts the second half. He gives the football to Roosevelt Snipes, and Snipes gets a couple of yards out to the 24. Ricky Eastman, who had an interception in the first half, is the left corner. The right corner is Jarvis Williams, 195-pounder. These uh, backs are pretty good size. Roger Sybil is 6'1", 200, and Adrian White is 6 feet and 205. Well, it's second down and eight for the Seminoles, with the Gators leading in the intrastate battle, 17-3. Pitch it out to Snipes, runs through the crack, but he can't get to the 30. They drop him a yard short of the first down. The offensive unit, Kirk Coker, quarter, high back, deep man out of that formation is Snipes. Cletus Jones, a fullback, Hassan Jones, and Jesse Hester have not seen the ball at the end of a forward pass so far. It's Patton Thompson, Morris, Barwick, Dukes, and Ionata along the offensive front. And the halftime stats. Here are the stats in the first half, and that's a lot of offense, over 300 yards in the driving rainstorm and the mud. Telling thing, court colonel with the Florida State. Cedric Jones is now in at fullback. And the pass by Coker is incomplete, intended for Hester. And coming over to make the defensive play and just barely tip it away was Roger Sybil on a dry field Frankie interception. No question about it, Keith. There's a little quick pattern, three step. Sybil's number 26, a former quarterback. In fact, he started the quarterback in the ball and then was moved back to safety, man. He nearly gets his hand on it, but he does uh, impair the vision of Hester, and the ball goes incomplete. Barry is in the punt, 37, 44, and 43. Under the conditions, pretty good. Deep man is Ricky Natil, one of the best in the country. Low line drive, he's got a little room. Raise that. He's got a lot of room. 34-yard <laughs> punt and a 27-yard return. Well, and it's first down Florida at the Seminole 37. It was a very low punt, giving Neil a lot of room. Look at the crease right over here to the left. You can see there's no Florida State players there. Neil leads the nation with a 15-yard average for a return. Very explosive player. Dangerous with that football. It has had a kick return, a punt return of 67 yards already this season. The Gators go to work on the Seminole 37 with Lorenzo Hampton, the eye back. And Lorenzo's got it over the right side, goes to the 30, picked up seven yards. The Florida State defensive front, Isaac Williams at tackle, 6'1, 260. Todd Stroud in the middle, quite light at that position, 5'11, 225. Gerald Nichols, 6'2, 250, the other tackle. Linebackers, Daryl Gray, 6'2, and 230. Brian Williams, uh, six feet, 215. Henry Taylor led the game with seven tackles in the first half. Fred Jones, 6'3", and 225. Second down and three. 
This is Hampton. Put on the brakes, trying to cut. Once he got his foot stuck in that mud hole, he couldn't get it out, and Billy Allen comes in to deck in. Eric Riley is a cornerback, 6 feet 170 for the Seminoles. Eric Williams, the other corner, 5'9", 175. Jerome McCoy, the strong safety, 6 feet 200, and Brian McCreary, 5'11", 170, the free safety. And uh, Billy Allen in there right now with Jerome McCoy out. There's the lineup for the Florida Gators on, defensively. Gator. The ball is at the 31 of Florida State. It's third down and just about five. Erwin Bell takes it, swings it out to Hampton, got a first down, goes out of bounds. They'll mark him at the 20. So it's first down Gators at the Seminole 20. Boy, this big offensive line is just outstanding. They have only the allowed seven sacks. Where's the beat, Keith? <laughs> there it is, 282 pounds. Average, you can see that they have just manhandled, I think, the Florida State defense. I think you just answered your question of earlier as to how well the field drained. Yes. Those guys out there, they tip it. <laughs> oh, boy. They take up the floor. When they line up, they've used up half the field, haven't they? First down on the 20. Bell rolls it out. Gets it down the middle. Good pass and a good catch by Ricky Natillo. Natil is an overachiever. Even though he has good athletic feel ability, the coaches say he works hard, runs those precise patterns. And what big thing here, he comes back to the ball, and uh, Bell throws it low away from the defensive back, where it's either complete or incomplete, coming back on second down, but it was completed, so first down. The Gators are trying to jump in the end zone in a hurry now. They have it first down and goal at the Florida State eight. There's that little pitch back to Lorenzo Hampton. He's got a pass. He scores. Well, they made that look easy. Extremely easy. John L. Williams, the fullback, makes the key block. Blocked out on the quarterback. Good blocking by an offensive line. You can see, watch the fullback, number 22. He's going to block the safety out right here. Opens up a big gash. And with a runner like him, outstanding speed. The safety man, McCraig, cannot get there in time. An easy touchdown. Good block by Wall, the wide receiver on the cornerback. <laughs> Bobby Raymond for the extra point. And it's good. So, just like that, 11-23 to go in the third quarter. The Gators jump out to a 24-3 lead. Outstanding blocking by the left side of the line. Look at the hole that he's got there. Excellent blocking by the fullback, and Hampton walks in. Number three in the nation, leading 24-3. They won the Southeastern Conference Championship, but being sanctioned, uh, the eventualities of it by the NCAA to come yet, but the Southeastern Conference barred them from the Sugar Bowl, and in fact, the Southeastern Conference could take away their claim of conference championship. It's a short kickoff down to the 15 to Darren Holloman, and Holloman pops it out of there and comes almost to the 35. They'll put him on the 34. Great return by Holloman. Broke a little crease there and looked like he was going all the way. Here's the scoring drive, Keith. Very impressive, as you've already said. Made it look very, very easy. After the punt return, set it up by Natil, the safety man. Florida's averaging better than 10 yards on first down. Florida State, about three and a half. That's about the difference in the score, three to one. Here comes Snipes and Roosevelt couldn't make the sharp cut that time. He missed his hole just a little bit. But he gets something out of it. He gets about three yards. Number 20, Roosevelt, Frank, Florida State is in trouble when they get this far behind simply because their passing attack is based upon the running plays, running play actions, and uh, Florida now is just going to lay back and force them to throw the ball and try to intercept it. Snipes is approaching that 100 yards, isn't he? Yep. And no one has gotten 100 yards at rushing against Florida this year. Bo Jackson of Auburn last year, 196. So one player in 20-some-odd games in two years rushed for over 100 yards. There's the Florida defense stats. Second down, about seven. And 
Ball squirts loose on the snap, and Florida State keeps it. As Coker, the quarterback, is able to pursue the ball and keep control of it. The option play that Florida State was trying to run, the blocking scheme pulls the left guard, and the quarterback has got to get back to let keep to let that guard go by in front of him. And so he's pulling out a little bit early, I believe, on the play. It was the same thing they had called on the goal line when they pumped. Now it's third down and about nine. They're one out of eight on third down conversions. Okay. Hooker pitches it out to Snipes, and as he makes his cut, loses his footing and comes up short of the first down. He might very well have picked up the first down had he been able to keep his footing. E Eastman closing from the outside, Alonzo Johnson, number 93. He's the player that Florida State has to be really concerned with on every play. Al Nada, number 77, walls him off momentarily, but he forces the pitch, and then Eastman, number 8, gets a lay arm on the leg. Here's the kick by Barry, a low kick, and it takes the Florida State bounce and then expires after about a five-yard roll. It'll be Florida's ball, first down at its own 22 on a 40-yard punt. The Gators in control of the football game right now, leading 24 to 3. And I'm sure those of you watching now are in your own minds beginning to compare football teams. Of course, we've had that phone call going all day. That's to the opinion on BYU. opinion on Frank well, the Florida team has been very, very impressive in uh, both sides of that football, offensive and defensive. Irwin Bell turns and hands the ball off to John L. Williams. And he comes outside with it and runs the football up across the 35. They marked him out right at the 35. There are the two numbers, the four numbers that are being used. The bottom two in Utah only. That doesn't mean, of course, folks in Utah. Now, we realize that it's, it's one state against the rest of them. So yeah, you've actually got your choice of four phone numbers. But the rest of the country, uh, those two bottom numbers were put in to handle the traffic in Utah. Jimmy Lampley will tell us what's been going on. We've passed 200,000 calls. Almost to 300 now, I'm told. It's really surprising. This is Neil Anderson. There's a penalty flag. Home for the referee, and almost invariably, that's going to be illegal procedure or offensive hold. Keith, I guess the biggest question we all have got in college football is who should be number one right now? At this stage of the, of the season, we've got three or four teams that, that seem to, to be up in the running. We have parity in college football, and uh, some people say parity means that you have mediocrity. It hasn't been a dominating team uh, in football this year. I happen to believe that uh, if a team wins all their football games, they've done everything they could possibly do. Been a 10-yard holding against Florida. First down. They deserve to win the vote. Now, I don't say that they're the best team at all. I think there's some other teams that uh, would challenge that. But deserving and being number one are two different things. I, I would cast my ballot for Brigham Young if they win the bowl game. They've done everything that their team could possibly do. I agree with you because... Uh, the, um, What's the number I need to call it, Pete? That's, uh, <laughs> that's the basic premise of, of the Pokes, is it not? That's, what, that's the way I see it. When Clemson was undefeated, they were given the national championship, even though some questions whether they were the best team. Uh, I know that uh, years ago, some teams were undefeated. Arizona State in that same league was undefeated many years ago, and they gave the national championship to Oklahoma when Arizona State was in the, in the conference uh, here we have a replay. Henry Taylor coming up and makes the play. But Arizona State was in the WAC conference, what, Keith, about uh, 75, I think mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. undefeated. Oklahoma had lost one game, I believe, or tied one game against California, uh, Southern Cal, and yet the voting went to Oklahoma ahead of Arizona State. Sometimes you get split polls, too. The, uh, there's a pass thrown outside. Good to Frankie Neal, who's having a big day against the Seminoles. And Frankie canters on up the field, and uh, looks like he's going to have a first down. Now, Oklahoma is going to put out a lot of pressure that the Orange Bowl maybe should be the national championship. I don't know. But I like, uh, I, I certainly like Brigham Young's chances. I think the people, many people will feel that they have a chance. Neal is number 21. It's really an outstanding athlete. 
not a first down. Yeah. He got yeah. back to the original line of scrimmage on that particular play. I think the fact that BYU is playing a six and five team in the Holiday Bowl is also well, they'll hurt them a little bit, but they've got to win that game big. If they if they are fortunate and beat Michigan uh, handily, I, oh, it's intercepted. Bell's pass is picked off. Brian McCreary has it, and he comes back down to the Florida 26-yard line of the Seminoles now. Got a little something cooking. Pass defense is based on the assumption of breaking on the football while it's in the air, and this is a clear example of the safety man covering deep first and then when he sees Bell point, look, throw up front of him, but Crary, a senior, comes in front of the receiver, the free safety, and picks it off and giving Florida State a chance. Big play by the senior McCrary, whose dad played for Bob Bowden at Sanford College many years ago. Now the question is, can the Seminoles put it in the end zone? First down at the Gator 27. Tony Smith is the tailback into the game for the first time. Apparently that back's bothering Roosevelt Snipes a little. Pass down the sideline, just thrown too high, intended for Hassan Jones. Unnecessary roughness by Eastman after the receiver was out of bounds, Keith. It, both officials dropped it very quickly. Eastman was, the receiver was out of bounds, and the safety man came over and made contact with him. So it's a penalty, a big penalty, against uh, the Florida Gators. All right, Jones, number 88, is going to get pushed out to the outside by number 8, Eastman. Then we're going to see number 2, Adrian White, is the one that comes across. If the ball is over his head, and the rule is very clear. On a pass, it's obviously underthrown or overthrown. Intentional roughness against the receiver ball. is a personal foul. Against Florida, half the distance to the goal. The ball is now at the Gator 13, where the Seminoles have it. First down. Keith, that rule has been in the books about six years, and that's one of the first times I've seen it called. Obviously overthrown. The receiver still was run into by the defensive back. Quarterback Coker keeps it, tries to follow his fullback in the hole, and gets two yards maybe on the play with seven minutes and 55 seconds to play in the third quarter. One of the few times that Florida State, excuse me, Florida has blitzed was on the last down. But ideally, this is the place you want to make something happen. And Keith, they had the safety blitz, and it forced the quarterback to keep the ball much quicker than he wanted to on the option play. Booker only got a yard on that carry, so it's second down and nine, the ball with the 12. And he continued out the line, Keith, he'd have gotten smashed. Yep. Cletus Jones is the fullback, and Tony Smith, the tailback. Blitz coming again. The quarterback has to keep it as they sealed off the pitch man. There was a gator between Tony Smith and the quarterback, Coker, and he had to eat it. Well, the linebackers of Florida run so well. They, that's the one thing the linebackers do. Let's watch the quarterback option. Now let's see the pursuit come out the line of scrimmage. Number 43, Arthur White, comes in and makes the play. He just lassoes Coker and throws him to the ground. Remember, Florida has not had a touchdown run against their defense in 17 quarters. Three for the season. That's a great record. Seminoles are one out of nine on third downs. Coker back. Gets his pass into Hester. Touchdown. to the outside receiver, Jarvis Williams, number 26, gave too much cushion. The blitz was on. Here's Hester coming inside. The, you cannot give this much cushion down on the goal line. Hester, uh, Williams, number 26, should have been right up on top of him, but great throw and excellent kick. The extra point kick is good. At 6.33 to go now in the third quarter, it's a 14-point ball game. Florida 24, Florida State 10. Well, this Florida State team, they can hit you, and quickly. And they've just stuck it in the end zone uh, very efficiently after the pass interception. 
Barco will kick off. And it's Lorenzo Hampton now, the middleman for Florida. Drifting back, it's into the end zone, beyond the end zone, and it'll come out to the 20. And let's check in with Jim. Okay, gentlemen, here's the latest result in the telephone poll. Over 300,000 votes counted with less than an hour to go. Keep calling in and voice your opinion on whether or not BYU should be ranked number one. I admire you, Frank Broyles, for saying what you said about them. I agree with both of you. My particular two cents on the matter, everybody plays teams that could beat them. Only these guys win every week. But Frank Broyles, isn't it true that Bo Schembechler is as good as there is at devising one defense to stop one offense in one game? Miami, what happened to them early in the season, Jim? That's a good point. As you remember, I think the innocent is Bernie Kozar six times early in the season when Miami was ranked number one. Florida State defense now got their hackles up a little bit, and they jump all over Lorenzo Hampton as he picks up a yard or so from the 20. Keith, have you seen the spear over here to the yeah. right? I had not noticed it. Something that unique in this stadium, there's a spear that registers the crowd noise and the last on that last play the lights went all the way up to the top i've never seen this this is registering the crowd noise right here to let the fans know whether they're helping the team or not whether they're getting involved look at them right there that's unique second down about nine bell gives it to hampton and hampton is caught at the 24. a touchdown crowd and home Partisan fans can fire your team up, Keith. Look at that light going right there. The fans get involved when they get a chance, and they are involved right now, firing up the Florida State Seminole. They can force a punt right here. They'll have the ball somewhere around the 35 or 40, probably, but Criswell, he, in that howling rainstorm earlier, he hit 152, so women can bust it. It's third down and a long six. Won't work. John Williams is buried. And it's fourth down. <laughs> Only our producer, Chuck Howard, would know where else they have this type of a arrangement of registering the crowd noise. And he tells me North Carolina State basketball arena, they have this. And when the crowd noise picks up, they light it all the way to the ceiling. <laughs> When he was a student at Duke, he said he sat there many times and watched it. Well, they're going after him, but they hold him out, and Chriswell hits it upfield, and the ball is handled all right. It squirted away for just a moment from Darren Holloman. But as we suggested, Florida State sitting up in good field position now at their own 47 first down. And you've got the running bears who are in the playoffs against the San Diego Chargers who throw it most of the time and they are not in the playoffs. It's Peyton and company against Fouts and company on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Well, back to this game, Keith. I, I, uh, Florida State has really got a chance here to get back in this football game. If they mix up the passing and running, they'll make it tough on the defense. Tony Smith stays in there, so we must have a problem with Roosevelt Snipes. Tim Brand will check it. This is Coker looking to throw. He throws it outside to Hester, and Hester, he hits the ground at the 49 of Florida. He had Pat Carter to tie it in, and sure Carter did. would have had 20, maybe 25. Good, good eye, Keith. He was oh, Carter was open between the halfback and safety, but Tony Smith is an interesting story. Very highly recruited young man, uh, had academic problems, went to junior college, came back just this fall. Keith did not participate in spring practice, has not played football in a year and a half. Go to the fullback, and Cletus Jones hanging straight ahead. They have marked him down around the 46. Here's Tim Brent. Keith, there's two things down here that are very important right now. You mentioned the drainage system in the stadium, and it is very good, but the footing out there is still awful. It's very treacherous, and that's because of the wet field, all the heavy rain. On Rosie Snipes, remember we told you your engine is back in the first half. It has tightened up. He's trying to loosen it, but right now he's in a great deal of pain. Thank you. That explains the presence of uh, Smith. And Snipes was approaching that 100-yard mark for the question that if he had 90 yards. Third down and three, and he misses Hassan Jones, and he had him. Coker had him. 
but uh, probably trying to zip the ball in between the defensive linemen. He threw it a little hard and threw it a little high. And he was throwing in between the cornerback Eastman and the safety man White. But Keith is exactly right. He had him open had it been a perfect pass. Would have been a first down. Well, they're unable to cash in from the good field position for that possession. Ricky Natillo goes deep. Lewis Berry is in the punt. Sixth of height. This is a good one. And it's going to go into the end zone. Seminoles couldn't quite get to it. It's 46 yard punt. Gators have come out with a ball at their own 20, leading by 14. With 314 to go in the third. Missile. He did say that his back has tightened up, but they put some heat on it. He is going to come back in the ball game. Right now, he's just resting comfortably. He says he'll be all right. Well, they need him. From the 20, here come the Gators now. Leading 24 to 10. Ranked third in the nation. But no party to go to over the holidays. Bell, quick drop, bang pass, drop. Pass incomplete. He hit Rick and Natillo right on the hands, but Rick couldn't pull it in. Well, Doug Flutie has finished his collegiate career, save the appearance of the Cotton Bowl, as BC rolled over Holy Cross today, 45 to 10. What a great career he's had. Been fun to watch him play, Keith. Bit of a surprise there. Alabama beating Auburn today, 17-15, when Pat Dye elected to go for the touchdown rather than a one-point lead on a field goal. It's fourth and one with two minutes to play when he made that decision. Lorenzo Hampton. Gonna throw it. May lose it. Nope. You know what? Number 43, Brian McCreary, who has a pass interception already, does, did not know where the ball was. If he had known where the ball was, it would have been a simple thing to catch it. Keith, what, what really happened, I think, was that this communication back there, the safety man should be talking. He thought that either you, right, he didn't know where it was, or at least he thought the halfback was going in. No, you're right. He didn't know where the ball was. No. The ball was thrown over his left shoulder. You're right. He could have turned and caught the ball. I thought it, my first impression was that the, he had, had the idea that the halfback was going to intercept him. Well, it's third down and 10 from the 20. And they run it up the middle, and they won't get their first down. So once again, the Florida State defensive people have done their job. It brings up fourth down and four, and the Gators will have to punt. Florida State defense, this quarter has after that first touchdown drive early in the in the third quarter has really tightened up Keith. they've been pursuing better they've been getting some penetration and they've covered the passes intercepting one of Kerwin Bell's passing attempts I think we're going to see snipes he's moving around on the sidelines Chris well is in the kick they need snipes no pressure and uh, he really hasn't hit but one big punt and coming across is Holloman to field the ball and falls down at the 41 once more Jim Frank Broyles, your alma mater, Georgia Tech, got a very satisfying win over Georgia today. It's the first time the football team has beaten Georgia since 1977. But more than that, it's the first win for Tech over Georgia in any varsity sport going back to 1981 and covering 28 different meetings in different sports. Pretty satisfying, I would think. Back to you guys. We're not dead yet. We're coming back. The rambling wreck. This is Coker. Shoots a little pop over to Hester. Hester gets away and goes for a first down at the Florida 38. Pete Panther made the big block that sprung Hester for extra yardage. Little quick look in pass off the option. Once again, the Florida backs giving a big cushion. But watch the block right here by Panther. Old number 26 Williams right there. Teamwork. Sprung in for extra yardage. This is the third pass that Hester's caught Keith, and up until this half, he had up until right recently had caught a one. In fact, wide receivers have not caught a pass in the first half. Well, no. Carter's the only one to caught the pass in the first half. It's first down for the Seminoles. On the Gator, 38. Coker going down the middle with it. Hassan Jones is down there, and it's incomplete. Actually, Hassan Jones had to turn into a defensive player in order to keep Jarvis Williams from intercepting. Defensive coach, the offensive receiver coach are constantly getting on the receivers. When you see you can't catch it, you become a defensive back. You must prevent the interception. If you can't catch it, be sure that the defensive back does not catch it. Here's a perfect example. 
Once that the Jones sees he cannot catch the ball, he's going to be real sure that Williams doesn't catch it. The ball goes incomplete. Second and ten at the 38. Smites and Jones are the setbacks. Hooker gets his pass off, and it's incomplete. Again, uh, Coker had Hassan Jones available, but threw the ball under some pressure, and he missed it. As a matter Coker. of fact, Kirk wound up on his back. Kirk. Coker, as we mentioned earlier, is a walk-on quarterback. He had been the second teamer coming into the South Carolina ball game. He got his first start, having played well in the, as a replacement against Arizona State the week before. Another walk-on starting this ball game. Florida quarterback Bell is also a walk-on. Third and ten. Play action gives them some time. The pass is off the hands. Of Rosie Snipes, I think the ball might have been tipped a little bit. Florida is the only team this year that we've seen that just doesn't like the blitz. They have one man to rush the pass, so that's Johnson. The rest of their people play draw and screen. The backs give a good cushion. They're not going to give you anything easy. They feel like they're good enough to play straight football technique, force you to go the hard way. That's been truth today. Barry comes in, seventh punt of the ball game. In case you joined us late, we had a horrendous rainstorm in the first half. Shoots it toward the corner. And he won't get to the corner. It skitters off into the end zone instead. And so once again, Florida will have the ball after a 38-yard punt. First down at their own 20 with a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Gator Bowls coming up here on ABC at 8 o'clock Eastern time, Friday, December 28th, matching. The South Carolina Gamecocks and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Two very good defensive teams. They play it a little bit differently. The philosophy of the two teams a little differently. But Pat Jones, Cowboys coming off the plains against the Gamecocks, who are quite a story this year under Joe Morrison. And the Sugar Bowl matchup, January 1st, at, uh, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, will pair the LSU Tigers against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. LSU getting in the Sugar Bowl today when Auburn lost to Alabama. On first down, this is Hampton. And this time, Lorenzo pops it. Gets it out to the 32, 12-yard pickup. First big game they Florida has made since their touchdown drive on the first possession. Good blocking again by the right side of the line. And once again, Williams of all-purpose fullback. Watch him make that good roll block, kicking the cornerback out, opening up the big crease for Hampton to go into the secondary before he's finally knocked down. Well, the Florida State defensive people have certainly done their job. The offensive people just haven't done much here in the second half. They've got a touchdown show for it, but on two occasions now, they've given the offense the ball up near midfield. And Florida now may be about ready to light the candle. Well, the Florida offensive line usually takes over this part of the ball game. Big, strong, active line. We talked about They call themselves the Great Wall, and rightfully so. 282 pounds, average across that middle. Quick, active feet, good pass blockers. Just the strength of this Florida football team, which is strong, really, in every area. It's second down and about four. There goes the eye back Hampton again. And he's got a first down. The second effort puts him up near the 45. When you've got the muscle, use it. Run right at the opposing team, particularly when they're a little bit tired. Lorenzo had 14 rushes for 81 yards. And what has he done this season? He's been averaging 5.2. He's rushed for 637 yards, 115 carries. But coming into this ball game, he ranks four, excuse me, he ranks seven. Third quarter is over. We've got 15 minutes to play with Florida leading Florida State 24-10. We'll continue after this commercial message and a word from our local stations. We go to the final quarter now here in Tallahassee as we wind down to the end of the regular season of 1984. And it's Florida in possession of the ball, first down, just short of their own 45, and leading 24 to 10 over Florida State. And they 
give the ball to number 42, John Williams. Uh, 22, John Williams. How many teams, Keith, have a fullback that can start off tackle and bounce outside, weighs 222 pounds? He's just outstanding. Here are the stats, and I think we should point out that the rushing yards, 214, in the last three or four, four years, every time that Florida has outrushed their opponents, they have won 33, lost two, and tied two. Pervading view among coaches, you outrush the opponent and you win the majority of the game. Is this Hampton? Big hole. Wow. Frank Brooks could have run through that. <laughs> well, the Florida offensive line, all they're trying to do is get a tie. These big, here's the stats I was talking about earlier. The Florida Gators just believe if they can outrush their opponents, they're going to win, and those numbers prove. But look at the hole. The one thing the Florida backs do, and Hampton shows, he starts wide, but he's never going wide. According to opposing coaches, he's going to cut back every time, right in behind the great wall, opening up that area to run in. It's first down at the Seminole 45. We're so stuck. 25 seconds. Show zero. Yep. Thirty-three yards, Bell to Neal, 7 0. Twenty-three yard field goal, seven three. Play a game against Florida? Of course they John Williams caught a nine yard pass, 14 3 Gators. And then Raymond, a 34-yard field goal to make it 17-3, halftime. Third quarter, Gators stuck it in the end zone, make it 24-3 with Hampton counting it. And the Seminoles came back on a pass to Hester. Neil Anderson now is in at tailback or eyeback for Florida, carrying the ball, and it's first down. Well, Henry Five-yard pickup on the first down carry. Excuse me, Keith. Henry Taylor, number 58. Weak side linebacker comes all the way across from the right side of the defense, pursues, jumps, leaps, gets involved in the play. In fact, makes the tackle right there, along with the help from his teammates, six to seven, Robinson. We've got a Florida man down. Can't tell you who it is right now. Keith, I want to go back to the Sugar Bowl. I think LSU has a chance to really play a great ball game. they got Wickersham at quarterback, who's one of the best passers in the Southeastern Conference. Martin and Fortnow, Fortnow, the wide receiver. An ankle sprain. Well, they're working on Walter right now. There was a penalty flag lost in the mud hole down there. And it was a five-yard penalty, illegal use of hands against Florida. The football has been moved back now to the 47-yard line of Florida. And let's see. They've got to go to the 35 of Florida State to get their first down. So you're looking at first down, and about 18. Well, there's the story of the weather. What the weather has done to it is John Williams uh, covers the ball, but it is treacherous in all ways down on that field. We had uh, an old-fashioned, as they want to say in this neck of the woods, a gully washer pass through here. And I mean, it wet down all the pasture land. Mm. And flooded, just about flooded the field sideline. What was it? Foot deep in water, up Looked to the like knees it. of Tim Brandt <laughs> at one time. It's a look at what the sideline looks like. Second down. And they give the ball to Hampton. And Lorenzo Hampton runs up to midfield. So they are now about 15 yards short of the first down. You judge a great back by how much yardage does he make after he runs out of blocking, Keith. And We've seen a lot of that today by the Florida backs. Hampton was hit at the line of scrimmage. He twisted and turned and still picked up some yardage. Good backs do that. Twelve and a half minutes to play in the football game. The Gators leading 24 to 10. Trying to increase their credibility as the number three team in the country. They don't have a bowl game. Seven holes blitzing, and I think they started too soon. Either that or somebody up front might have moved. It could have been Crawford Kerr, the right tackle for Florida. Gators are kind of stumbling along here now after that opening touchdown in the third quarter. They haven't done much. 
Florida State defense has really been successful with their penetration and also in their pursuit out the line when they needed to. They've just been gang tackling, fired up. The touchdown that they got in the third quarter, put them back in the ball game they feel like, gave them a chance. They've not been able to do anything with two good possession, two That's possessions good in good point. field position. When you get the ball at midfield, you ought to do something yeah, with you've it. got to do something with it in a, in a ball game. Remember, Florida State is the underdog. They've come in this ball game against an outstanding Florida team. It's been very impressive. Gators have been flagged 11 times now for 98 yards. That's a lot of penalty. That is a lot of penalty. Third down and 20. Fumbles the ball. Well, I'll be done. Bounce right back to the second time, Keith. This bounce right back to Florida. I think this time the Florida State player hit it and knocked it back into the Florida man's hand. It brings up fourth down. Let's watch it again. I believe that 55 Jones is going to dive on the football. Let's see if he does. Right here on the left, no, it's 58 Taylor. Taylor. He dives on it, but he can't control it. Pops it right back out. He's getting the leg of the center. Bromley also. Chris Mell is in. All of his feet. High short kick. But it takes the floor to roll and goes out of bounds down around the 20. So the Seminoles will have it. We check in with Jim. All right, not to belabor the point, but once again, we report the results of the BYU poll. The margin in favor of no votes now larger than it has been at any time during the day. Again, the phone numbers. If you want to vote, yes, 1-900-720-0070. No, 1-900-720-0077. In Utah only, there are two other numbers which are at the bottom, and you people in Utah can use those numbers as well. Our poll will end at 7 o'clock, even if the game goes beyond 7 o'clock. And we will report a final result of sorts at about 7 o'clock. Remember, let's not take it too seriously. We all have a lot to talk about in this memorable college football season. Keith? All right, Jimmy, here comes Florida State. They take the ball up the middle with Cletus Jones, running it up to about the 25. Eric Thomas is back in there at quarterback now for Florida State. About 320,000 calls, I'm told. At 50 cents a pump, that ain't bad. That's incredible. But that shows the interest that we have in college football. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> well, I had to. As a college administrator, I hope that interest there. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and five. Thomas steps away from the pressure, but the pursuit continued. Three men, and the third man got it. Ricky Williams. Florida defense continues to shine. Receivers are covered. When the receivers are covered on a play action pass, normally you get one look. Fake up the middle. This is the third sack of the ball game. Receivers are covered. Now the defensive men are coming off of their blocks, and the quarterback really doesn't have any safety valves to go to on the play action pass like he would if it was a drop back pattern. From the 22, third down and eight. Here comes Roosevelt Snipes. Fumbles the football, and Florida's got it. Roger Sibyl recovers the ball. Snipes had made the first down, too, Keith. He'd gotten across the 30, but he didn't protect the ball when he got hit. Hard young man right there. And his back could be balled yeah, in a little bit. Back. Four turnovers now for the Seminoles. When you're the underdog, you've got to play flawless football if you expect to upset a favorite team. One that's as good as uh, Florida is. The ball just pops right out. Florida falls on it for the fourth turnover the ball game. Well, this record crowd of 58,930 has hung in there despite the rain. The turnover story. Coaches fear turnover. Steve, we, we coach against it, work against it. We don't know how to stop it, though. It just pops up when you don't want it to. This is Neil Anderson carrying the ball from the 32 to about the 27, 28. Keith, has a Florida back been thrown for a loss today? I don't believe that they have. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. one time uh, on that goal line charge. There's Galen Hall. I just want to say this. Keith, I'm so happy for Galen. I've known him for close to 20 years. He 
work for Barry Switzer, who is the winningest coach in college football today. I don't know how much better tutors you could have than working with Barry in the national championship that they've won. Second down, about seven. And bouncing outside, it's John Williams. And he goes inside the five and down to about the two. Is he good? He is just a junior. John L. Williams, 222 pounds. Already as a fullback, he's rushed for 727 yards coming into this game. Here's why. The pitch, they force it outside, number 57. Robinson misses the play. 32, Mayhew misses the tackle. Here's the fullback. He's not a tailback. And you throw the two big tailbacks at the opposing team and then come in with a fullback. Boy, that's leaning on you pretty heavy. And they're bringing it back. Another penalty. That's 12 flags on Florida. They're holding against Florida. It will be a first step. Against the Gators. To continue about John L. Williams, Galen Hall told me of all the fullbacks they've had in Oklahoma, he thinks that John L. is the most complete fullback that he's ever been around. That's quite a compliment. Oklahoma's had some good ones. That's a point of a foul call here, Frank. Right? Because the ball is marked at the 17. Gives they have a first down at the Florida State 17. Big old tailback again, oh. rotating him in and out. Anderson and Hampton. This time it's Anderson. And they just hammer you. Keith, I don't think we've seen two tailbacks that run as hard as Anderson and Hampton. And Galen Hall told me, he said, that we, they, we allow them to substitute for themselves. When they get tired, they come out. But the most successive plays that they have is six. They must come out after six plays. You can see the extra yardage that they make. Watch the block in the offensive line. Look at Kerr, number 77, knocking the linebacker all the way back. Got him in his sights, locks on to him, and allows the ball carrier to go in the second year. On second down, they go inside with the ball. John Williams carrying, and he's just a little short of his first down, it appears. Not really close to it, but perhaps a little short. It's close enough they'll miss it. The big, that stops the clock with eight minutes. Keep the big offensive line. Boy, if coaches had their choice, they'd take a quarterback and an offensive line because that's where the experience comes in. There are four seniors in this offensive line and one sophomore. They average 282 pounds, but more than this, they have that quick feet. Galen said they as quick as any offensive line he's ever been around, and that is saying something. Galen said they as quick as any offensive line he's ever been around, and that is saying something. And as a result, they're able to spread the wealth around amongst the running backs. Anderson has 94 yards in the ball game. There's the size of the line. Yep. Hampton has 93 yards in the ball game, and William just picked up 68, and he just lost a big run on a penalty. Keith hit the bottom line, 1981. Here's the height, 6'3", 256. In the three-year period, you can see what weights are just natural growing. One inch and what, uh, 26 pounds. Bell gives the ball to the eye back. There's a penalty flag thrown. Neil Anderson carries. And you got to play. One thing that Kerwin Bell had going for him, Keith, as a walk-on quarterback coming in the lineup, all the offensive plans did depend on his execution. With that offensive line, the running back, he can kind of play his part as just a part-time passer and a good ball handler and signal caller and generate confidence from the team. And that's what that young man has done. Walked on at the University of Florida. What they say was his fifth string quarterback when yep. he started the fall. All other scholarship players ahead of him worked his way up and has had a sensational year. Florida State on the defense lining up outside. First down. Here's what he has done for, for today's game, but he has thrown 15 touchdown passes for the season, which is second most ever in the history of a Florida quarterback. It is first and goal for the Gators now, and the ball is on the Florida State four might be a door slam. Bell gives it. And Williams takes it. And Henry Taylor made that play. Oh, did he make that play. We used to say about our linebackers, Keith, analyzing is paralyzing. Let the good ones play. Go after it. Read and react. The more you coach them, the poor they play. Jones, number 55, and Taylor, number 58, just together combined made that tackle second down and goal the ball is closer now to the three with 655 to play in the game Hampton now is the eye back Penalty flag Florida State 
started too soon and Bell throws the ball away as he got blitzing pressure from Mayhew. It's against the Gators that 13 flags. And the Gators had two wide receivers. The crossing ends were wide open for touchdowns. If he hadn't been a penalty, he could have gotten the ball off. No one back in the secondary coverage. I would think the Florida State defense is getting tired now. Yes, they're getting tired for being out there and long keep it also frustrated, as you said, and losing their confidence because that big offensive line of Florida has just walled them out of it. I like the term that Bobby Bowden told me about the Florida offensive line. He said they must block. I have illegal motion against Florida. Second down. I said, what is must block? He said they just latch on to you and they won't let you get away from them and they just soft you right out of there. They don't fire out and knock you out of there. They turn you. A must block. I'm going to go back and remember that <laughs> turn. <laughs> 6.44 to go in the ball game. It is now second down and goal. The ball comes back to the nine. Bell rolls it out. He's hit as he throws. The pass is incomplete. And it was blindside pressure coming from number 47, Eric Williams. No, uh, Brian Williams. Well, we've got five Williams playing in this ball game. Yeah. I give you the benefit of the doubt that you get one. We've got five starters named Williams in this ball game. Brian is a defensive end and has played outstanding ball for Florida State all year long. Coming from the backside, as Keith mentioned, the receivers were covered and Bell had to hold the ball and gave Williams a chance to get to it. It is third and goal from the nine. Bell lobs it up in the corner and it is incomplete. Good play. Gary Roll and Mayhew knocked it away. Mayhew, number 32, playing the pass. He shoves the receiver, which was legal the first time. Now he's got to get his eyes back to the ball. He gets his left hand up and knocks it away. Bobby Raymond's on the field now. So is Chris Well to hold it. And we're going to have a field goal try from 26 yards. He's kicked one from 34 today. And then he's had a marvelous year. I was going to say, he's what a fantastic record. Good. At 6.32 to go in the ball game, it is now 27 to 10, the Gators. Here you can see the big horses, got a little grime on them, but they've done their day. Well, the offensive line, see, they love to block on the running game. That's the way they get to hit somebody. Blocking on that running game and Florida line has been outstanding. Perkins kicks it. It is taken by Carlton Scott. And Scott, as a penalty flag goes down on the field, he is short of the 20. Again, Jim. All right, for any of you who may have been out all day and missed this, Boston College beat Holy Cross, and in the game, Doug Flutie concluded his regular season college football career. He threw his 25th, 26th, and 27th touchdown passes of this season, wound up his four-year career with 67 of those. At this moment, he is in New York, where within the next 45 minutes, he will receive the Heisman Trophy. Also here to participate in that ceremony, Bernie Kosar of Miami and Keith Byers of Ohio State. They will rank as two of the leading candidates going into next year, along with Bo Jackson of Auburn, and also, possibly, Napoleon McCallum of Navy, who could be given another year at the Academy if that decision could be made, possibly even at the Pentagon. Back to you, Keith. Ready? Florida State was caught holding on that kick return, so they've been penalized half the distance. They start on their own nine-yard line, trailing by 17 points. And Eric Thomas gives the ball to Roosevelt Snipes, and Rosie runs it out around the 27-28. So that puts him over 100 yards, and he is the first back this year to run for 100 yards against the Gator defense. He now has 107. Keith, you can see that he's tired. <laughs> the way he's getting back in that huddle, he's paid for that 107 yards, but he started out like a house of fire. The Florida State team was getting good blocking, but this half has been all work. Thomas gives to the fullback, and there is nothing there. Cletus Jones runs into Leon Pennington. Boom. The 
professional figure skating featuring Ty Babylonia, Randy Gardner in the pairs, Robin Cousins and Tala Cranston in the singles competition as ABC's Wide World of Sports returns next Saturday, December 8th at 5 Eastern and Pacific Time, 4 in the middle of the country. Keith, I'll never forget Robin Cousins' performance in the Olympics. That was the most exciting skating event that I've ever seen. He was sensational. <laughs> And he'll be performing again next, what, next Saturday? This time he gets to bank his money. Yeah. <laughs> it's first down for the Seminoles out at the 19, as you saw the measurement. Happiness on the Florida side. Tony Smith is the uh, eye back for the Seminoles. Florida won here uh, last time they came up. Well, one a year ago, I guess it was, down there, 53-14. This is Smith, hopping one. And Tony Smith finally gets it going upfield and picks up another first down as he reaches the 33. The option play, faking the full back up the middle, trying to hold the linebackers where he can seal off the speed of the linebackers. Then the pitch to Smith, who was a very highly recruited youngster from Miami. He broke Buster Ryan's high school records, Keith. And he made. Up at the 46. Well, Hester's had a fantastic career at uh, Florida State. Caught a lot of passes. You can see why right here. He knows where to get open, concentrates on the ball. Williams, number 26, makes the tackle. Time is definitely the ally of Florida now at 4.49 to play in the game. It is trying to win their night against the loss in the tie. Eric Thomas gets it off. That's interference. Tackled him before the ball got there. Jarvis Williams made his move too soon. Jarvis just arrived at the point too quickly. It's the first down at the spot. It just uh, really was only about a four-yard penalty. Williams, number 26, is going to arrive at the spot before the ball gets there. Runs right into the receiver, right there. Clearly interference, first down at the spot. Carlton Scott, the man trying to catch the ball. He's another freshman. Pass interference against Florida. Spot foul, first down. I kind of like to have the soap concession. <laughs> oh, gee. Midfield. That, that shower is going to feel good for these players in this ball game. They'll soak for a long time in that warm shower. Getting that whirlpool. Soak those aching muscles. First down at the 50. 441 to play in the game. And that's the fullback, Cletus Jones. He's got about five on that carry. We're getting close to the we're right near seven o'clock now, so we should be closing down that the phone pole on number one. And it'll be kind of interesting. I'm just it boggles my mind that uh, we've had over 300,000 phone calls. Frank says folks are interested, huh? Well, go on, man. Number one gets everybody's attention. When you talk about two and three, I don't remember who two and three have been for the last two or three years. Thomas. But number one, yeah. Gets it off. Good to Smith. Spins away from one. Goes for more. Got a first down for the Seminoles at the Gator 33. That's what... A good experienced quarterback like Eric Thomas can do. All receivers covered. Doesn't panic. Finally just finds uh, Smith out in the flat behind the line of scrimmage. Safe pass. Good run. First down. They don't have Hassan Jones. He's hobbled on the sidelines with a sore ankle. He hasn't been out there for some time. And the big threats of Florida State, the wide receivers, have been pretty much neutralized by the field. Wouldn't you say? Steve Nicholas is in the game now. Wide receiver. Flank a spot. And Thomas hands the ball off to Smith. And Tony runs it down to the 28. Picked up the better part of five yards on that carry. So Jax Youngen, Steve, is in the ball game, number two. Number two, Steve Nicholas, wide receiver. If I Steve, I'd ask for an allowance to be increased after what Jack did last weekend. 204, what was 220 or 240? 240 on that button. On the 18th hole. Thomas drops it. Gets it back. 
Ball bumped off the running back as he went by on the fake, and Eric lost control of it. It's still wet and soggy down on the field after that huge rain that we had in the first half. Every fump, uh, Florida State fumble, Keith, has been off of the pullback fake up the middle, and we're trying to run the option play, letting the guard pull out in front of him. It caused the exchange, exchange problem. Florida State's called timeout, 2.41 to play. Seminoles come up now on third down, and they need about seven. Inside, Tony Smith working, working hard, and he keeps on pounding. Well, he's beginning to get his legs, isn't he? He goes all the way down to the 15 for a first down. I think he made all of that yards, Keith, after he'd first been hit close to the line of scrimmage. It just shows the termination. He weighed 185 pounds when he left uh, because of academic problems. When he came back, he only weighed 170. But he got hit right at the line of scrimmage by Pennington, 43. But he doesn't go down. He twists, turns, and he makes about additional 10 yards after he was first hit by a defensive player. Seminoles first down, called up to Florida 16. Well, you, with all that mud and water down there, they're all getting kind of greasy now. Thomas wanted to throw it, pulls it down. And Eric putting on a little show of determination himself as he runs it down to the 11. Five-yard pickup. Just moved inside of two minutes. And we now understand that Jim Lampley has the final totals on our call in today. So we'll check with him just as soon as we see what happens to the Seminoles here. Now we've got a momentary timeout called. I think the clock kept on winding. And it should have stopped, shouldn't it? What's. Uh... Well, it was second down. It wasn't the first down. Now they won. Discretion here stopping the block by the official. It's on the 11, it's second down and five. Thomas pitches back. Whoa, there's a hit. He got some taunting over there. I don't like to see that. I don't either, Keith. It's disgusting. I just, there's nothing in the world that irritates me more than that kind of behavior. Jarvis Williams, number 26, is going to come up and make some kind of hit. But then the taunt will come on. Now, there's a rule that says it's an unsportsmanlike penalty. You'll see right the tail end of it if we can get it here. Watch. Well, we didn't catch it. The taunt was there. Thomas turns around, throws it into the end zone. For Hester, it is incomplete. And Williams breaks it up. Jarvis Williams makes the play. Here's Bobby Bowden, one of the real fine coaches in the country. Keith, I rate him as a complete. If I had a list of qualifications that I'd want in a coach, he has them all. He'd be right at the top of the list of any coach in America. Dr. Roy Talley. Prior to his coming to Florida State, there were four wins and 29 losses. Since being here, he's been coach of the year and has won 71% of his games. We got a timeout by the Seminoles with 120 to play in the ball game. In this uncertain We'll have the results of our BYU phone poll for you in just a moment. Right now, the Florida State Seminoles are looking at fourth down with a minute and 20 seconds to play in the football game, and they're trailing by 17 points. The outcome of this game is academic. Thomas is back. Gets his pass into the tight end Carter, who hits the goal line. Touchdown. That Carter, the tight end. Carter's just a freshman. The toughest man to cover on the goal line is the tight end coming across. Linebackers losing. Carter works his way across the line. In front, he's such a big target that when he catches that ball, he tucks it in, and he has good speed, good power. He pushes his way right in for the touchdown. Florida State now has called its last timeout. With 1.14, they're talking about a two-point conversion. Here's Jim. Phone poll, over. Official tally, final margin, 24,746 votes. Largest margin of the day between no's and yeses. And so, among those people who have called in, 
over 357,000 of them. Our viewers believe that by a majority of 24,000 votes, BYU should not be ranked number one. We recognize that BYU has been singled out for special treatment here. We ask them to greet it with humor as we have tried to all day long. We didn't decide a national champion here. This was not a scientific sampling of the entire nation's college football fans. It has nothing to do with those, of course, who are going to vote officially on who is the national champion after the bowl games on January 1. But once again, among those of you who were able to get through today, the margin in favor of those who believe that BYU should not be ranked number one as opposed to those who believe they should. Thanks for your interest in college football. Keith? Hey, Jimmy. Well, Derek Schmidt now, after all that talking, comes out with his kicking team. But he had got his holder. You got everybody out there comes his holder. Danny McManus. Poker normally holds, but McManus comes out to do it this time. And the kick is good. So it's now 27-17 with 1.14 to play, and an onside kick is coming up. And I'm now of the opinion this Florida football team can play with just about anybody else I've seen I this agree, entire Keith. season. They're very impressive. You know you're going to get an onside kick here with 1.14 left to play in the ball game. All the defensive backs, Keith, and offensive ends and receivers are up here ready to field it. That may generally qualify as one of the less imaginative onside kicks. <laughs> I think everybody on both teams knew what they were going to do. They came inside tight. Look at the Florida State team lined up. Where could they kick it but right there? And straight ahead, the Florida people do not wait. The ball did not go 10 yards, but that's all right. The ball belongs to the team that recovers it, Florida. Had they touched it and the ball bounced away, it would have been Florida State's ball if they could have recovered. Smart play by Florida, just coming right up and falling on top of it. Their ball. Well, if I was going to kick it straight ahead like that, I'd have kicked it hard, hoping it ricochet off somebody, wouldn't you? I would do something a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> something different. Yeah. I believe I'd have had him thinking I was going to kick it somewhere besides there. Rodney Brewer is the quarterback now, making his first appearance. Another freshman for the Gators. He picks up three, and here's Jim. All right, for anyone who missed it today, Alabama beat Auburn 17-15, knocking Auburn out of the Sugar Bowl and putting LSU into the Sugar Bowl. This game, of course, was played in Birmingham. Mike Shula played quarterback for Alabama and led his father's friend, Bill Arnsparger's team, into the Sugar Bowl, in effect, by beating Auburn. And Georgia Tech beat Georgia 35-18. As I mentioned before, first time Georgia Tech has beaten Georgia in any varsity sport since 1981. Keith? And this one is just about done here in Tallahassee with a half a minute to go as Gord this time takes the snap and sits down. I think somebody on the sidelines said, hey, Rodney, take the ball and sit down. None of them want that running stuff. You stick in your head in the middle and somebody will whack you upside the head and you might lose it. I think Galen heard you, Keith. He's laughing about it now. But if the freshman goes into the ball game, he wants to do something too sure besides don't. ball ball. Don't blame him at all. Dave Burns in our stats. Todd Berry, our spotter for another season of football. We hope you've enjoyed the year with us of CFA football on ABC, and this game is complete. The Florida Gators have defeated the Florida State Seminoles by a score of 27 to 17. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by your local BMW dealer. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. By Prestone 2 and 3. America goes with Prestone. By Zenith Advanced System 3, the smart set, the quality goes in before the name goes off. And by GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. Well, the Gators have won again over the Seminoles, 27-17. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United is the first and only airline to serve all 50 states. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports.